guys, good evening. Thank you guys so much for joining me for our second Arteza unbox and swatch stream. I promise this is the last Arteza art kit I am reviewing this year, at least last full art kit that I'm reviewing this year. So hopefully you guys have all had a safe, happy and healthy week. Maybe you've been making lots of art. I wanna go ahead and say that we are currently waiting for our washer and dryer to be delivered tonight. So if things get kind of hectic, that's probably what's going on. But you know, those of you who have ever had a major appliance delivered and installed in your house, you guys know you don't get to pick the time, they pick the time and you're lucky if they even call you first. So um, hopefully we can get through this whole Arteza mixed media art set tonight. This is totally different. I'm not even joking from the set that we reviewed last week. And I have a, hey Bugsy, good evening. I have a time-lapse version of last week's Unbox and Swatch going live tomorrow morning for the folks who cannot spend four hours unboxing and swatching watercolor acrylics and gouache live. I am also working on the Arteza advent calendar. This is the 12 day advent calendar, so we are I mean, I don't want to spoil you guys. Sorry about that. We are three days deep and uh, <laughs> small spoiler, but tomorrow, because I am going to be somewhere else tomorrow, I already went ahead and unboxed day four. So forget you guys saw anything. But so far we have gotten a mini pad of acrylic paper. And you remember how last week the canvas paper was like actually canvas with gesso on it? This is the other type I was talking about where it's it's not even plastic coated. It's just a heavier paper with kind of a linen-esque finish on it. We have also received one size four round synthetic brush as well as one tube of scarlet red acrylic paint. And day three starts the actual challenges or activities and day three's activity is to paint a portrait of Santa using our tube of acrylic paint. So what I'm going to do with the advent calendar is I am going to unbox every day first for the first 12 days and then all um, the remaining days up to either the 24th or the 25th, kind of depending on how many activities they give us, I'll spend those doing the activities and either doing them live or recording them and sharing them that way. And that is the most feasible way I can see myself doing all the things that I want to do this holiday season. And speaking of holiday season, in case you didn't know, because I haven't really been promoting it a whole lot, I am running a special holiday deal on my comic, Seven Inch Kara Volume 1 and Volume 2. You can get both volumes for just $35 right now through the Natto shop at natosoup.com slash shop. There should be a special bundle deal. And uh, if you want me to dedicate it to somebody special, just leave a message in, I think there's a comment field or you can reach out to me and email me or message me on Discord. Hi, um, is it pronounced Helena or Jelena? But either way, hi, welcome. So I think that basically catches us up on housekeeping, we can finally get around to unboxing and swatching our Arteza mixed media art set. So let me guys, let me guys, let me know you guys if the music's too loud. I'm sure I'm kind of loud, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut it open. One thing I will kind of complain about is that the boxes that these art kits come in are just very, very boring boxes. They're very plain. So I have all the info in the description for you guys. Unfortunately, I can't provide a link because for some reason, this isn't available on the Arteza site at all anymore, not even as a sold out sort of thing. So, and it's pretty securely taped at the top. I'm gonna go ahead and move it down so that hopefully on the face cam, you guys can see a little bit better. Inside, I may have to put it on the ground. It's actually pretty heavy. Inside we have some styrofoam. And that's just to protect everything inside. Although I 
as I mentioned in a lot of my reviews, I'd love to see biodegradable packaging. And then inside we have this bundle here. And then we have this box here. And if you give me a moment, I will go ahead and grab the kit we reviewed last week very, very quickly, just kind of show it to you guys. And that'll give us a base of, basis of comparison how it differs from this kit. This kit is less expensive, but it's also more watercolor focused. And hey, Cindy, good to see you. So this is the art kit we took a look at last week. Both of them come in wooden cases. They both smell really nice. They smell like wood. This one has a handle. I think it's pleather, not actual leather, and two large brass, brass clasps. What a tongue twister on the sides. And then inside we have two hinged trays and then underneath them, we have more of the paint. So we have five synthetic paint brushes here, ranging from a flat all the way to a rigger. They are, uh, they say they're for acrylic and oils. I found them to be kind of floppy. We have the 12 piece metallic watercolor set. We have tube watercolors. We have a water brush. We have tube gouache and metallic tube gouache. We have a plastic palette. We have tubes of acrylic, tubes of metallic acrylic, four wood cookies or wood slices. We have 10 gel pins. We have five acrylic markers. They're kind of half full though. We have replacement nibs. We have tweezers. This also came with a pack of black DIY frame ske sketch paper, but it's more like a mixed media paper. We, it came with a pack of their cellulose watercolor paper. It came with a pack of really interesting canvas sheets. So they're actual cotton canvas that have been primed. Um, it came with two full-size stretched canvases, one white, one black. It came with four canvas panels, uh, two white, two black, one rectangle, one square. So it actually came with a lot of stuff. The total value of this kit is $150 approximately. And I think I paid around 100 for this kit. So, except everything wants to fall out. It's not quite as sturdy as I would like. And it is a little bit heavy considering it is a wooden box kit. So the kit we're taking a look at today seems to be more watercolor focused. It does come with another 12 half pan set of the metallic watercolors. So I need to find a good home for these because I've already got a set. I don't need to. I'm going to go ahead and cut into this. Hey, Vermis, good evening. And the reason I wanted to review these sort of more budget friendly art supply kits is every year I try to review a couple of art kits since ever since a few years ago, there was this big discourse on art Twitter about whether or not art kits are a good gift or a terrible gift. And I kind of fall into the camp of they're a really good idea and people are really well intentioned in giving art kits, but a lot of art kits are really terrible. So I try to review a couple of the most, or what I feel like would be the more promising affordable ones each year. So I think last year I reviewed one from Hobby Lobby and one from Michaels. And this year we're doing two Arteza kits. And already the Arteza kits are far more promising than what I was, wow, there's a lot of stuff in this, than what I was seeing sold at those arts and crafts stores. And of course, you can sometimes find art kits from like Faber-Castell, sometimes Windsor-Newton, like actual popular art supply brands doing art kits. And those are great, but those do tend to be more expensive than many people feel like art supplies should cost. I'm not 
I don't agree with that, obviously, but um, so what I think is kind of funny is like last week, Joseph asked me if a parent would spend $100 on that art kit, if I could see that. And what I think is kind of funny is you have people who will happily spend way more money buying their kid, their teen, a PS5, but will bulk at spending that much money on art supplies. So, I mean, if we're just talking financials, yes, I think people might be willing to spend that much money. I mean, it doesn't mean that they should, but they might be willing to spend that much money. But are they going to spend them on art supplies, especially if they're not very comfortable with art supplies and they don't really know what things are supposed to cost? A lot of people are really shocked when they find out how much art supplies cost, but they're also thinking that you use them up super quickly, which is also with nicer art supplies, that's also not really the case. So it's one of those like, well, I don't know. If it was our kid, I would be more likely to spend that money buying them a musical instrument or art supplies or um, craft supplies or a sewing machine or you know woodworking tools than I would to buy them a PS5, but you know, I'm, I'm an artist. So hopefully this helps some people who are curious about buying, either buying these kits for themselves, asking for these kits as a gift, or buying these kits for somebody they care about. Hopefully this is more helpful. So inside the shrink wrap plastic, we got the metallic watercolor kit. So we did take a look at this last time. I'm going to pull the one from last time and that way this one can stay nice and pristine and go to somebody who will be able to put it to good use. We received a watercolor cake style or tempera style palette and I don't have the best experiences with these but we will swatch these, we will see if these are any good. We received an inexpensive plastic six weld palette they do sell these at Dollar Tree. We received a 50 sheet drawing pad. And I have to say, I do love that they coat their wires with red. It does look pretty stylish. So this seems pretty sturdy. We received a 20 sheet mixed media pad. And these are all in their premium line. So this is not actually the best line Arteza has. The best line Arteza has is, um, it is either their expert line or their pro line. They kind of have two, but they don't have a whole lot of art supplies in either. So premium is the larger of the line that isn't just children's art supplies. We also received a 24 pack of Inconic pens. We received a 10 sheet pad of the DIY frame sketch pad, as well as 20 sheets of the premium watercolor pad. So. What was in the other pack that I just reviewed? These three things. So the watercolor pad, the DIY frame sketch pad, and the metallic watercolor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna set these aside and just for the swatches, I'm just gonna pull the ones that are already open. That way these can go to somebody who will enjoy them and you know put them to good use. Or maybe I'll do a giveaway here on the channel. I will move these over and that gives us a chance to actually get inside this wooden box and the wooden box is shrink wrapped it's got two brass clasps and it, what looks like a drawer it does have little rubber feet so it doesn't tear up your desktop it has an interesting looking hinge mechanism I don't know how that works yet, and no handle. So, digging into the plastic. Hey, Justice, good evening. Hey, Dawn. Hey, Dr. Bennett. How are y'all doing? I'm glad y'all could make it. And I would say the bottom looks like it might be an MDF. So a composite wood. It smells good though, I'll give it that. Okay, so I'm also dual recording this just so that I can share a time-lapse shorter version for folks who don't have time for the full unboxing swatch. 
So let's take a look at what's in the first layer. And okay, so this does not open all the way, like at all. I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. I think it's designed not to, now that I'm looking at the, the way the hinge works, it's designed to be kind of easel style. There are some stray hot glue strands. It does make it a little bit more challenging to show you guys though. So over on this side in this plastic tray, we have an Arteza kneaded eraser. We have an Arteza plastic eraser, and we have a small either magnesium or aluminum or, uh, pencil sharpener, kind of like a Coom style sharpener. We also have three white gel pins in 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.0. It'll be interesting to see how their gel pins handle. And then up here, we have their colored pencils, and these are part of their premium line. So down here on this row, and let me just make sure you guys can see, that is important. We have another delicious anti-mold chip donut eat. We have a color mixing wheel or a color selection wheel. And I have to tell you guys, I have purchased very similar things to this and I, I don't know if I know how they work. So what it does is it shows you um, the different shades of say yellow. So that's as you're adding black as well as the tints. So that's as you're going from white to a more saturated orange. And then it shows you like the tetrad, the triad, the split complementary, the complementary. So this could all be used to create kind of color harmonies. And if you, if you find tools like this intriguing, but frustrating and confusing, I will say there are sites like Cooler, and then there's another one, it, and it's K-U-L-E-R, I think it's owned by Adobe, where they, they huh, they rebranded it? Color. Adobe Color, okay, thank you. So um, there are sites that actually make it a lot easier. So if I'm trying to come up with um, a color story and I don't really know what to do, I'll go over there and put in like the main colors I'm working with and see what they suggest that I use. So on this layer, we have our two Arteza Expert pencils and Expert is their like nicer line. We have some Arteza oil pastels, which is Interesting, because they didn't really include any pastel paper, but we could probably use this on their cellulose watercolor paper. We have a set of four water brushes compared to the one water brush that we received in the other set. And then we also have, I am such a sucker for these kind of art kits that have like a drawer. I don't know what it is about it, but I'm just like, oh, it's so fancy. This to me, I like this layout better. It doesn't necessarily take up as much desk space when open and, is and accessible as the other layout. And I'm also a sucker for the little drawers. So down here, we have their watercolor pencils. And I do think, I have to double check this against their site, I do think they have a nicer line of watercolor pencils in their expert line, but I'll have to double check that. And then we also have a row of woodless graphite. So these pencils would be entirely graphite with like, I think it's like a plastic coating on the outside. So we've got HB, 2B, not 2B, 4B, 6B, 8B, Honey B and 10 B. Just kidding. They're all B's in increments of two. So H B, 2 B, 4 B, 6 B, 8 B, 10 B. And I think when I say that's it, I just mean there's no trays hiding underneath these trays. There's not doors within doors. And we also have their handy dandy brochure. So while there are some similarities between this set and the other set, I think they're two very different, to me, they're two very different sets. Um, I mean, there are three items in common, although two of those are paper and they're both. So something I did notice 
is that these are all kind of abbreviated versions of their larger sets. So like the paper pads are like half the size with the exception of the Arteza watercolor paper. They're like half the size of their normal pads. So the DIY frame sketch pad, I think has 20 in it normally. And the one we received has 10. So, you know, stuff like that. So we also have a big old brochure And I'll just read through the whole thing in case you guys didn't, weren't able to make it last week. Create your masterpiece with Arteza Mixed Media Art Set. Mix and match your favorite wet and dry media like watercolors and color pencils to create stunning artwork. No need to hunt down all the supplies. This set has everything you need to get started. Add little touches of paint to your drawing and sketches to add a unique touch to your artwork. Use metallic half pans to reach for the stars. And they also have like a tutorial that goes with that. And that's something I like about Arteza is it seems like they are trying to find ways to make their products more accessible and easier to understand for someone who might be coming from a no art background. And they also have kind of tutorials designed to get you using the art supplies. And I really like that because I feel like it lowers that barrier of entry and it makes it a really good gift. Now, one of my problems, and this is the same problem I had with the other kit, is I do wish that some of this were printed out in a pamphlet because not everybody has a lot of internet, not everyone has internet access, not everyone has access to a computer, and having a printed booklet means that you could still use this when you're traveling or if you don't have access to a phone or a computer or internet. So we have our 12 metallic half pans. Bring attention to specific areas of your drawing with a touch of shine. Add water to activate. Use a wet paintbrush or a water brush to get the paints ready to be applied to your piece. 12 shimmering shades. Get a good range of colors to highlight and accent your work with. See how the colors will appear in your artwork using the included black and white swatch sheets. Stored in a tin, use the tin as a palette and keep all your paints together. Then we have 24 water soluble oil pastels. And I haven't messed around with water soluble oil pastels too much. Um, I've worked with oil pastels before, so this will be interesting. Glide these smooth pastels across your paper and incorporate the lines directly into your watercolor piece. Blends easily. You can use a combination of, I shut this because I didn't want it to block the camera, but I should be gesturing. So these are the water soluble pastels. Glide these smooth pastels across your paper and incorporate the lines, blah, blah, blends easily. You can use a combination of pastels, a water brush, or even your finger. <laughs> Y'all know I am, I am, ooh, that would be hard for me. Once things get on my hands, they get all over the place. Um, or even your finger to blend lines into a soft, hazy look. Make sure to thoroughly clean your water brush afterwards to prevent clogging. Works well with watercolors. Apply a variety of unique techniques with complete control over your media. Create thick or thin layers. Build up areas with thick layers of pastel or press lightly for a soft touch. DIY black sketch frame or DIY frame black sketch pad. Try something different with your white gel pins and water soluble oil pastels. Oh, that's true. These would be opaque on that paper. That's pretty cool. Easy to fold. Follow the folding guidelines and perforated tabs to put together your frame. Apply a variety of media. Experience how your paint and supplies interact against the dark background. Make highlights pop. Watch as light colors and shades stand out brightly against the dark background. Make, oh, and you can also use the watercolor pad. And then they have the three gel pins. So those are these. And I don't know about you guys, but white gel pins die so quick for me. I used to love them and now I just use white gouache because it doesn't die as quickly. So I'm hoping these are pretty good. Add tiny highlights and finishing details. Opaque quick drying pens. The ink remains white even on dark or colored surfaces. Smooth roller ball. No need to worry about your pen skipping as you draw. Won't clump or streak. Go back over your lines as many times as you need. We'll see about that. Then we have the explore your palette of watercolor cakes. So that would be this here. And they have some helpful tips. They have a QR code, watercolor painting helpful tips. <coughs> Reading is thirsty work. I have some, I was smart this time. 
So no need to set up a palette. All your paints are right in front of you. All you need to do is add the water. Let's go ahead and get that started. Gradually build up colors. Applying varying amounts of water to adjust the saturation of the color in your artwork. Easy to clean. Simply let the cakes dry off before, before putting them away. Portable. Protected in a plastic case. They're easy to travel with. I can't get this open. You can use water-soluble oil pastels and watercolor pencils to make accents and details. Come on. Oh, why do they have a hanger board? I have never seen Arteza sold in a brick and mortar. Eep. I'm gonna have so much cleaning up to do after this. Okay, let's move this back. Let's pull out our secret drawer. So now we have the two expert products. HB and 2B drawing pencils. Plan out your pieces before you start adding colors and details. Coat it in a satin finish. Your hand won't get fatigued or sore as you draw. Medium hardness of graphite. Create soft sketches that can be easily corrected. Sturdy and break resistant. The graphite core is protected by a soft wood that can be sharpened easily and prevents the core from breaking. And then my watercolor pad is on the floor. Make beautiful watercolor masterpieces with your watercolor pencils on this special paper. Heavyweight sheets, the 300 GSM, so 300 is about 140 pounds, which is a little heavier than cardstock. The 300 GSM paper is suitable for wet media. Lightly textured surface. Each sheet is carefully pressed with a light texture that enhances your artwork. Glue bound pages. Simply tear a sheet from the pad when you're ready to work or create directly on the pad of paper. And you can also use the mixed media pad. The plastic palette. So that is this one here. This is, this is pretty ubiquitous. We've all seen these at Walmart and Dollar Tree and online. Keep the colors you're using separate as you work. 10 wells. So they're also counting these over here. Set up a full set, set up a full set of colors to use in your painting while keeping them from mixing together. Easy to wash. Rinse your paint away from your palette with water. Mix custom colors. Lift the paints from the pans and place them into the wells to mix them together and create new shades. Then we get the Inconic pens, which come in a nice metal tin. I have not used these before. I assume they're a lot like Triplus fine liners. They look a lot like Triplus fine liners. Pair these with graphite or color pencils for a touch of boldness and unique techniques like stippling and hatching. Ergonomic grips, so these have like a triangular grip. The triangular shape is perfect for both left and right handed artists. Bright colors, add bold details and sketch unique textures. 0.4 millimeter nib, capture even the smallest details and create fine lines. You can also use white gel pens to add highlights and finishing details. And then here's a QR code with experiment with iconic pens, helpful tips. Go in. Draw like a pro with colored pencils. So I gotta put the drawer back in and shift it and tilt it. All right, there we go. Add color to your sketches or burnish your drawing to create a realistic look. Soft pigmented core, the color glides beautifully onto a variety of paper and can be easily layered and blended. Encased in durable wood. Each pencil core is surrounded by a wood casing that protects it but can be easily sharpened. Break resistant, these color pencils can withstand traveling and being jostled around without breaking their nibs. Are they, are these shots firing at Prismacolor here? Oh, and these are also triangular bodies. So that is a little bit easier for some people to hold. You can also use Inconic pens and white gel pens for clarity and brightness. Drawing pad, sketch and draw on this lightly textured paper with your favorite dry media. Spiral bound with perforated pages. This pad comes with 50 pages that you can use in a spiral binding or easily remove pages. Perfect for practice and final pieces. Cleanly erase any mistakes without any fear of smudges. Convenient size. Take this nine by 12 pad with you to create on the go or sketch in your studio. You can also use the DIY frame black sketch pad and mixed media pad. And then they have top 11 color pencil video tutorials. So there is a QR code with a bunch of tutorials behind it. Then we have our sharpener and erasers. Correct your mistakes, clean up your artwork and keep your sketching tools sharp. 
kneaded eraser. The putty texture can be molded into any shape and can be used to lift graphite from your page delicately. PVC eraser. So we also call those white vinyl erasers. Remove, oh, that's, so that's more like a, um, a mono eraser. I thought PVC erasers were not necessarily legal to sell. And something else I note in the US, something else I notice is that the erasers both say expert. So they're the nicer line. Remove any mistakes or construction lines by rubbing this eraser over graphite. And then the metal sharpener. Keep all your pencils perfectly sharpened and ready to create. Put it forward. Pull it out. It's kind of fun. I like that it kind of transforms. So six woodless graphite pencils. Get more of the graphite core with these versatile sketching tools. Six different hardnesses. Choose from a spectrum of graphite ranging from HB, 2B, 4B, 6B, 8B, and 10B. Full range of values. Easily develop a scale from light to dark while you're shading for sketching and shading. Angle your pencil to shade large areas or draw fine sketches with the nib. Now, one thing that kind of, kind of, I don't know if it's just me, but like they're, they're referring to the tip of the pencil. Like the, the point is what I would have, you know, the point of the pencil. Um, they're referring to that as the nib, and I don't know if that's like a translation thing or if whoever wrote the copy isn't super familiar with art supplies or if people call it a nib and I just didn't know. But that's kind of like, hmm, for me. And then we have shade and blend with pencils tutorial. Make magic with watercolor pencils. Are these also triangular? They are also triangular. Okay. Draw amazing masterpieces and add awesome watercolor effects. 24 watercolor pencils. Pair these with water brushes, so that's these over here, to create beautiful watercolor paintings. Water-soluble core. Every stroke is packed with water-soluble pigments. Have complete control. Unlike traditional watercolors, you don't need to plan your shades and layering ahead. <laughs> What? Um, what? You don't need to plan your shades and layering ahead. You can simply dive into creating. Use wet or dry. Just a few drops of water will transform your drawing into a watercolor masterpiece. You can use your white gel pens and inconic pens to add accents and details. Mixed media pads. That's one of these in the stack. Use multiple media together to create artwork with dynamic effects. Can withstand both wet and dry media. Each sheet of 180 GSM paper, so that's about 90 pounds, so that's a little thinner, or around cardstock, depending on the brand. Each sheet of 100 GSM paper is specially created to make the media you use look professional. Combine your favorite supplies. Great for any pencils or light watercolor paintings that don't involve a lot of water. Test out techniques. See how certain techniques look together and test out the media so you feel comfortable using it. You can also use the watercolor pad. Uh, that is for sure. So with cellulose watercolor pads, in my opinion, they're basically mixed media pads. Uh, you can use alcohol markers on them. You can use color pencils on them. They're not the best at watercolor, but they're kind of good all-rounders. Combine your favorite supplies. Great for any pencils or light watercolor paintings that don't involve a lot of water. Test out techniques. Oh, I read all that. I'm so sorry. All right. So four water brushes. No need to keep dipping your brush in water. These brushes can handle it. Hold a decent amount of water. The reservoir in the handle of the brush prevents you from needing to constantly refill your brush. Easy to squeeze dispenser. Simply press the button. Oh yeah, we got the cheap ones again. So in the picture, they show the nice one with like the squeezy button. Simply press the button on the side of the pen to get more water in the bristles. Flexible nylon bristles works just like your favorite brushes and can be used with a variety of media. Then we have our Ooh, oh, there's a back. What? I'm gonna have to like play with this. I, so I should be, I should be fair and show you guys what I'm seeing. Cause these are important tools. So I guess this is your main color and this is what it looks like if you add any of these colors. And this is something I would need to play with more. So I have, I have to confess something, I can't read maps. And this falls into that category of kind of like a map. It just takes me, it just takes my brain longer to do it. I don't know why, it just does. Test out which colors will look best together before you start working. Helpful guide allows you to see which colors will look 
which colors will go together best. Plan ahead for your projects. You know, they were just telling us with the watercolor pencils, we don't have to do that. Mm. Figure out which color schemes you'd like to use before you start painting and learn about color theory. Understand how the colors will affect your piece. And then we have the wooden art case. Store all supplies in one place and keep them secure while you aren't working. Protect your supplies. Prevent any accidental damage to your supplies while you travel or work in your studio. Large storage case. The case measures 15 inches by 9.5 inches by 3 inches and has a drawer to hold all your supplies. Easily bring your art tools with you. Keep your case packed with all the supplies you need. And then they have a QR code for pick the right watercolor paper helpful tips. Whew. Somehow, even though I think the other kit you get more, 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 like more acrylics and more gouache, this kit has lots of different little individual things. So we, we have our work cut out for us today. I'm certainly going to be drinking a lot of water today. So I cleaned off, I say that in heavy air quotes, I cleaned off my side table, sorta, so I can put this big kit over to the side so that we actually have room to swatch things. So I'm going to go ahead and move it. One day I'll have like a side table view. So um, here is the question because this kit comes with some things. Let me grab them. This kit comes with some things that we already reviewed in the first unbox and swatch. The metallic watercolors, the DIY frame sketch pad, and the watercolor pad. Do you guys wanna see me re-swatch the watercolors or um, would you prefer to just kind of skip that? Uh, they are supposedly water soluble oil pastels. And I say supposedly because the, no, well, well, there are, there are water soluble oil crayons, like ne Neo pastel or Neo color. Well, well, there, well, yeah, I mean, there is a phrase, goes together like oil and water. We will, we will find out. It will be exciting. Um, always say pencil tips. In my lexicon, pens and markers have nibs. That's how I feel too. And thank you, Dawn, I appreciate that. And I have never used pastels on camera um, just because, I don't know, they're just kind of different from like what I normally do on here. And that for me, they don't really work for the kind of comics I make. So they just kind of never found their way onto the channel. Um, I did, I love pan pastels. I got some in either an art snacks or a sketch box and I just really liked the consistency and they were, they were really good for doing backgrounds. My problem with pastels is they're so smudgy. All right, so we're good with skipping these. That is fine. So for the time-lapse version of this that I'm gonna release later on, I will edit, <laughs> I'll be cheaty and edit in and do voiceover, of course, when I'm swatching these. I just need to remember to do that. So that allows us to spend more time on focusing on what's new. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab the watercolor paper and the black DIY frame paper that was from the other kit. That way I don't have to open those and I can just send them off to somebody else. So I will do that and I will also refill my drinking water and I'll be right back.
Yes, and I actually need to respond to Jill's email, and I haven't forgotten. I've just been, my head has just been like, <sighs> lately. All right, so what I'm going to start with doing is I'm going to start on, like, unwrapping these pads. And Bowie was flipping and flopping around and being very cute. I had to pet him on the tummy before I came back. Also put on my... Um, so these are supposed to have like UV blocking in them because I find like sitting here and, and recording, I have like a lot of light going at my face and sometimes I tend to get like very overwhelmed. So one of the things I don't love is that everything or almost everything is individually wrapped and it's harder to get into. It does protect it, but it was very well packaged. And I think all of this was shrink wrapped too. So I don't really understand why everything has to be wrapped in so much plastic. It seems like a lot of waste and it does make it harder to get into. Uh, something else I've noticed is uh, Arteza says that they're an American company designed in the USA, manufactured in the People's Republic of China. So basically everything they sell is a white label product where they're buying it from a different manufacturer and putting their name on it which I don't know about how y'all feel about it, but like when I'm reviewing stuff, it makes it really hard to find information about it because it's like every step of the way info gets lost, whether it's pigment info or like what the paper content is or, you know, it, the archival quality of it or light fast information. So I would like to see them better about that. Something else, I don't know. I think it's just me. Something that kind of weirds me out is when I tweet about reviewing Arteza stuff, I don't tag them necessarily. I'm not, I'm not like embarrassed of them seeing it or anything, but I don't necessarily want to get into a conversation with Arteza about like what I'm, how I feel about the product. Do you know what I mean? So it's just kind of like, part of me is like, oh, I didn't even turn on the music. Let me fix that for y'all. I don't know, part of me is like a little weirded out because it's like, well, I'm going to give like 100% my honest opinion. I'm not going to sugarcoat things, but I'm also not looking for a fight. So that's probably entirely on me. I know their customer service reps probably don't care if I say like five or 10 or 20 negative things in a review, but um, having, having butted heads with like Sketchbox in the past, it makes me really, really, yeah about that. All right, so what do you guys wanna see? Oh, is, that, is that all of us just like in like this weird December fugue state? That's, I feel that. Okay, so I'm gonna take a look at the, pa the new papers and then we'll take a look at the older papers and I'll just kind of recap things. So this is their uh, drawing paper acid-free, heavyweight, spiral bound. I like that it's top spiral bound. That's usually my preference. Um, it's 80 pounds, so that's actually a pretty heavy drawing paper. So maybe a little heavier than that. See, comparing it against Strathmore is a challenge because Strathmore has, I mean, so they have different degrees of quality too, but Strathmore makes a lot of things in each category. So Having not yet used this, I would say this paper is a pretty good weight. I like the top perforation. Believe it or not, I'm not a big one for drawing paper. Like I love sketchbooks because I can just wreck them. And I like mixed media paper because I can throw whatever at it. But drawing paper ugh, it makes me, and it would probably be great for inking on. So maybe we should try it with the inconic pens. There's something about it that I think it's, it was when I was in school. Um, whenever our art teacher would give us drawing paper to use, she always made a big deal about like, okay, you need to have a good idea of what you're going to draw. This is, this is for realsies, yo. And, uh, it just always made me kind of like, oh, I don't know. So also it doesn't have like, it has a, a good amount. It's kind of smooth, not too much texture, uh, and not like a specific texture, like that linen texture. That's kind of weird. So, um, I think this one would be fun to ink on. This is side spiral bound, perforated. We only get 20 sheets in this. So I feel like this is one of the ones that might've been especially made for the kit, but I'd have to double check against the site. 
um, acid free, so it's going to be a cellulose paper, uh, ideal for wet and dry media. This is 110 pounds, so a little bit heavier than their drawing paper. And this has a texture. It's not the worst texture though. Um, when it comes to mixed media paper, I'm just, I just really like Strathmore. I don't have any partnership or relationship with Strathmore. I just happen to like Strathmore. Um, their 500 series cotton mixed medium vellum paper is like the nicest mixed media paper. So this is a little, a little thinner than what I'd like to see in a mixed media paper. Even the 300 series Strathmore is more like a cardstock, and this is like a thinner, a thinner one. So then we have the watercolor paper. So if you guys hung out with me Sunday, you guys remember this. Uh, this is their full size pad, so 20 sheets. It is a cellulose paper. You can tell because they say acid free. Usually if it's cotton rag, they brag. Um, it's got a cold press texture on it, but I'm not a big fan of it because it's that like linen kind of texture, almost like a canvas. And I just find that looks too regular, but that's 100% personal opinion. This is heavier, like a cardstock. I have tried their expert paper. I still don't know where my pad of their expert paper is, but their expert paper is a cotton rag, and I do like that better than this. I did the donut dash watercolor illustration on that. Yes, they sent this and this in the other mixed media kit. And one of the another complaint I have is that Arteza has named these kits very similarly, but they actually contain different things. And they are both technically mixed media kits, but I would actually say the kit we're taking a look at today is kind of like a Studio Basics kit, whereas the other kit is like a Painting Basics kit. That's how I would kind of separate the two. Um, I feel like that does a little bit better job at kind of encapsulating what both kits have without it sounding like, oh, another mixed media kit. So I actually really liked the black DIY sketch pad. This thing folds up into a, I'm looking around cause I know I have an example somewhere. Everything's always just slightly out of reach. I need, I really need to learn telekinesis like yesterday. Okay, so this is one of the assembled black frames. So it looks like you get a big sheet of paper but a lot of this gets used up in turning it into a frame. What I, why I like this, I like this. The reason I like this is because I really like anything that kind of champions you thinking about your own art, your own illustrations as being art worthy of being proud of, art worthy of keeping. And I think this does that because it makes it into a special object without it being overly fussy. It makes it into something that you're, you know, you can display. And I think that's important for artists of all ages to, to start embracing that I can make things that are beautiful or interesting or worth having um, and I can put my own art up. In fact, a little bit of a segue, I did a poll on my Twitter asking other artists if they put their own art up and most other artists said they don't. And I think that's, I think that's kind of sad because like I, I, we have not put anything up yet. but. I have all these originals that I've commissioned from other artists and I have prints that I've purchased from other artists and then I want to put my own art to, up too. And I think being able to look at something you've done and love it enough that you would like to look at it regularly is like, that's a wonderful thing to kind of incubate. That's a wonderful sentiment to kind of have because if you don't like your own art, then it's hard to convince other people to like your own art. And I say that as someone who sometimes struggles with that myself. Um, so anything that kind of champions like, yeah, your art can go up on your wall, I think is kind of cool. Now this is heavier than a standard sketch paper. This is more like a mixed media paper. In fact, it's pretty similar to the Strathmore black mixed media paper that um, works really well with Posca markers. So I think this is fun and I like that they are releasing something like this out to the public. So that is the papers they've included. Next, we have the Inconic pens. It has a water-based ink. It would not surprise me if it is water-soluble. So we should test for that because that is actually pretty important. And we have 24 unique colors. It does have a small, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get the camera to focus. So we'll just, we'll just do our best. 
Come on, you. There you go. Hopefully you guys can see. It's got like the metal encased felt style nib that like Stabilo has. So I would love it if these were waterproof. They might be alcohol marker proof and that is something we can actually test tonight. I've got a Copic. Um, hopefully there's something proof and can be used with other things. And then we have the 36 watercolors. So this looks a lot like the Artist Loft watercolors that I don't really love. Vibrant Colors Washable Non-Toxic includes a number three round brush and mixing tray. These were made in 2018 or at least packaged in 2018. Arteza watercolors are available in a variety of sets and colors. Please visit arteza.com for more. And they just have like helpful watercolor tips. So that's something else I like is the inclusion of like, hey, you wanna learn how to watercolor? Here's a link. Am I, am I vouching for their tutorials? I, to be honest, I have not watched their tutorials, so I'm not vouching for their tutorials, but I like that they care about people learning how to use their products. Ooh, that, that wants to fold all the way up back. So I was kind of hoping there would be something in here just to kind of stop it from flopping all the way back so that, you know, it had some rigidity. But these are pretty typical for what they are. This brush. Oh, okay. All right. So you remember how we had a lot of brushes in last week's set? And they, I thought they would, at first I thought they were going to be terrible. And then, you know, we discovered they're not that bad. This one is. This is this is that bad. It's all bent. There's stray hairs going everywhere. The, I'm not gonna use this brush. Okay, so eat it, Bowie. I I didn't throw it at him. I promise. Oh, I hate you. I'm sorry. I was. That's how bad my aim is. I was actually aiming out the hallway door, but uh, I meant for that to be funny, and I failed. So. Um, did we did we get a uh, consensus on uh, which product we're going to start with first? Which review is best review? I should grab. I know we're not going to swatch the metallic watercolors today, but I am gonna I am gonna grab them and just show you guys, and hopefully that'll serve as a good reminder. Oh, so that's something interesting. This kit, other than the paper, had slots for everything. The other kit, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't fit in that kit. I mean, what they're doing is they're probably buying like blank boxes and just, you know, having this part custom made and then gluing it in. But I think it's weird that they couldn't have even gotten their metallic watercolors in their other kit. Not weird, bad, just like, huh. I would really be interested in them doing a kit with their expert line of stuff, just, just to see. Okay, so we're gonna start with the watercolor cakes. That sounds good to me. Okay, so these are the same metallic watercolors. These are, these are the ones that are already open. I was actually kind of impressed. I thought they were gonna be terrible because I did not like the Arteza half hands, but these are all right. They do have a decent amount, I would say, of color payoff and shimmer. Now, pretty much everything, with the exception of iridescent pink and plum purple, is the color plus like a white mica. They also show up really nicely on darker papers. Now, some of these shimmer watercolors like that different brands offer are not particularly good. So um, I'm happy that these are much better. And I think for tonight's unboxing swatch, I'm going to actually use the included water brushes. That's something I very rarely do, but I'm trying to use the stuff that they have provided <laughs> with the kits. So we're gonna start with these and we're going to swatch them on this using these, let me, just put these to the side where I can grab them. And I need to remember to use this with the ink conic so we can see if they are alcohol markers safe. I hope they are. And I am gonna use a Copic to demonstrate 
opacity. And I do need to fill these. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just get this started. Oh, 36 colors. Math time! I think that's three rows of 12. Believe it or not, I was not someone who like blew off math. My mom was a seventh grade math teacher, but it is not my strongest. I like patterns and I like geometry, but just, you know, regular math is not necessarily my strongest area of expertise. I hate accounting. I hate, are you, are you about to like out me? Uh, it's a, a subtle dig, uh, way back. Yeah, well you can, I mean, Blick and Arteza, and sometimes even Amazon. I gotta get three out of this, so let's go with six. I just moved the camera, so it shouldn't be anymore. And people should be able to see that. Thank you for letting me th know though. Man, I remember my early days of YouTube, my head was like always in the shot. In this video, in this video in this, it's so hard to break that though, in this video. So, as you guys have probably figured out, I say so as a, as a segue indicator. What is that called? It's not meant to be a response. It's like when you say good morning. Anyway, uh, Tom Scott talked about it, but, so is one of the words that I say as one of those like transitional filler words. And I edit that out of videos so much and it's still so integrated in what I do. On that note, see I tried not to use so, aren't y'all proud of me? On that note, uh, this is just to help us kind of test out the opacity of these paints. Typically these kind of desiccated watercolor cakes tend to be more opaque. I've seen people paint some really beautiful stuff, especially like those florals, like the loose, ever so easy, effortless florals that are actually really hard to do. Um, but I've never had good results with them personally. So I don't necessarily mind that Arteza included them in this kit because they included a lot of different things. So it's like, you know, not everything is gonna be like your favorite thing or the best thing. Let me see if I can get y'all closer without it being too obnoxious. I'm gonna move this aside for a moment and I'm going to, this feels flimsy though. Like I've reviewed the, I've reviewed a few of these, the Angora brand ones and those are made by the people who make Rembrandt. I've reviewed the Artist Loft ones and these are some of the flimsier feeling ones. I don't know if pre-activating them is going to be a curse or a blessing, but this is how I treat all my watercolors, so we shall find out. No, I am a goofer. I am a goofer because <laughs> 36, wait a minute, Joseph, is 36 divided by 312 or is it, okay. All right, so this has four lines and that totally threw me. So I'm going to have to like, what is it, do four extra per line? I'm going to, it's going to get all messed up. I'm sorry. Math is not my strong point, as we have discussed. I'm trying to figure out a good way to get it on camera. I'm also going to, let's see if these have any starch in them or not. They do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go remove, rinse out the starch at the sink and fill them up and I'll be right back.
I do, you know what, I do. I'm gonna do that. Because nobody's really expecting these to be super, um, like, like great blend out effects. I also noticed, and I'll show you guys in a minute, that we have, I'll show you the, the sizes of the nylon bristles we have on our water brushes. And I'll also, one of them is a flat. Which is, I mean, I think I've mentioned this a few times. I personally am not like the biggest water brush person. Um, Like they're okay, but not, not my go-to because I'm heavy handed, which means I tend to really bear down and squeeze on my my brushes or my pens or whatever. So generally these sort of squeezy barrel things and I just don't get along all that well. There's the flat. That's kind of a neat little flat too. Also these flats generally have like a tendency to leak a lot. This one looks a little bit better built than some of the ones. You know what? Why don't we put it to the test? Why don't we just go ahead and use it? I don't even know why I'm like dithering about on it. Okay, so 12 lines. Not 12 lines, come on back. A uh, highlight if the cake soap soak up or dries up, up after pre-wet, because I, when I pre-wet artist loft, the water is soaked in so quickly that I have to put more water on the cakes. Yeah, so that's a really good question. Some of these do have some water on them and then some of them sucked it up. And I've noticed that watercolors that have a lot of like extenders in them tend to do that. They tend to just soak up the water so quick that you have to constantly re-wet them. We will see if these, I have a tendency to do that. So one of the other reasons I don't really like water brushes all that much is I find I just have to really scrub them a lot to get the color out of them. Try to do mass tone and a little bit, can I, nope, okay. It said nope. That's my other, my other personal complaint is like, and then when I do finally get some water out of them, it's just like water. I mean, I want these kind of watercolors to work and be good because they're very affordable. It's probably easier for companies to produce these. They're just very accessible kind of watercolors. And I mean, so far these are okay. I wouldn't say I like love them, but I also think they're better than Crayola's. So what have y'all been up to this week? Anything fun? We did water marbling with the art squad and we were hoping we'd get a bunch of kids because water marbling is one of those things that it is cool and it's fun to do, but it is very quick. You can do a bunch of water marbled paper and then you're kind of waiting for it to dry. And we only had a couple kids show up because our, our time slot is like at dinner time basically. So, I think we're probably switching the time slot, but they breezed through water marbling quick. And then it was like, oh, we don't have a, a plan B. I also need to like sit down and like think about some art, like grab bag assignments. You know what I mean? Things that are like, if we finish early, I can have them do this other thing and it won't seem ill-conceived. See, it's not like a class, it's like a club. So we can't make people do anything. Uh, and that's okay, like I'm, I'm not, I don't really like making people do things. Mm 
but oh that's like a quin gold that is such an interesting choice in this kind of a palette i don't know how i feel about these they're not as bad as i thought they would be Anyway, I enjoyed water marbling and a lot of their pieces came out really beautiful. I just wish I had like a quick, cause I was hoping it would dry quickly and then I could show them how to like cut them out and turn them into like, you know, easy Christmas ornaments or we could doodle on them or something like that. But it's Louisiana. So we mar water marbled quickly and then spent a lot of time waiting on paint to dry. The Man, the color selection for some of these is really interesting, too. Who am I? What is this? Well, the true test with something like this, I've found, is like with the field test, when I'm trying to layer colors on top of each other. Although, frankly, I think these kind of little cakey style watercolors, you probably are not going to get too many layers out of them. They're not, they're not that bad, though. I thought they were going to be, like, abysmal. I hope they did. So... The hardest part of water marbling is buying the kit because you need these like pigment, liquid pigment things that will float on the water surface. But the goal is to have them water marble the paper, hold on to some of their water marble pages, and then use those as zine covers. So like we've got a game plan. It's just getting to that game plan. shot these are better than I thought they would be and I don't my brain man I'm like the easiest because if, if a product is better than I expected I'm always like wow so good even if it's not particularly good my expectations were so low these are great and, and the water brush is not bad either I would, I think I would pick these up again and try to do like some loose florals or something like use these to follow along with a loose florals tutorial since there isn't necessarily a lot of layering involved and it seems like I'm not like really having to scrub to get color out of them. I wonder how much, I'm going to look this up by the way, uh, but I I, like off the top of my head, I'm like, I wonder how much they charge for this set normally. Because that's going to change my opinion too. So Anna said, I'm trying to finish two paintings for Christmas. One is a watercolor of my friend and his daughter from a couple Christmases ago. It came out pretty good so far. And I'm afraid to finish the background. Oh, yeah. I hate when you're close to the finish line on a piece and I, and I panic of killing all that hard work. Boy, I know what you mean. But, I mean, I think the most important part is done, right? Like, you're happy with how your friend and his daughter turned out. So I think if, I think unless you like get that background all over them, <laughs> I think they'll still love it because the important part is, is good, is solid, but I know what you mean. So usually what I do, is, and I'm not, I'm just, I'm just talking. What I do is I usually do the background first and that way if I like ruin the background, then, you know, I mean, okay, I ruined the background. But I find it's easier for me to correct mistakes in the background and then do the people than to try and fix stuff after I've done the people. And I don't know if it's like that same kind of, oh, hello, good evening. I don't know if it's like the same kind of anxiety that you're dealing with and like just having like a specific way of doing it has helped me get over that anxiety or, you know, deal with that anxiety or if it's like a genuine, co oh, that is more opaque than I expected. Or if that's like a genuine coping mannerism. But I know it, I know that feeling 
and it is so stressful, but I think you're going to knock it out of the park. Um, maybe just take like a day or two away from it, you know, and that'll kind of help you overcome those nerves or I don't know, photograph the heck out of it now or scan it in it's like now. And that way you could always maybe finish it digitally or something. I know you weren't asking for advice. I'm sorry. I just, I feel that. Oh, okay. Oof, I'm still gonna be. So apparently that was a call from the delivery guy who, keep in mind, it was supposed to be delivered sometime after four. He said it's gonna be delivered sometime after eight now. I mean, right before, right before eight. eight, sorry. So we're gonna, we're gonna have dinner and a show because there is like no way I'm gonna get through all of this before he gets there. And uh, that's okay, I will, I will persist even through the distraction of the washing machine being delivered. And Joseph's here, so he can kind of help me handle that. I'm gonna have to refill that. It is a, oh, you know what I could do? I could be smart and just swap it with one of these that are already filled. Oh, galaxy brain. You are, you, Anna, you were very generous with that because I can get in a mood where I'm like, I didn't ask for advice. Mostly because when you do shows, you get a lot of people who have never drawn or painted since fifth grade telling you how to do your life. And it's all stuff you've already done or stuff that doesn't actually, isn't like really feasible. Like, like advice like, yeah, you should get your work in the newspaper. And it's like, I would love to get my work in the newspaper. You know anybody? It is pretty exciting. Um, so this is, this is like our first everything that is ours. And if it gets ruined, we're not answering to a landlady. We're answering to ourselves. I did, but I couldn't even bring it with me. I, we had to sell it for like way less than it was worth. There was nowhere to put it. I know, thank you for reminding me that we should be, like, I mean this genuinely, that we should be excited about these things because I tend to have a really bad tendency of getting like lost in the weeds and over-focusing on how the minutia isn't lining up with what I thought it would be like in my head and then being like a baby about it. I am pretty excited though. It's a speed queen and I, those are made in the U.S. and I was pretty impressed with what I saw when we went to go look at them. And I'm also really happy that we were a they were able to deliver it so soon because I know a lot of people, there's like six month waiting lists for appliances and considering this area got hit pretty hard by Ida, people are a lot of people are replacing everything. Oh boy. Yes, when he says dumb machine, he doesn't mean the, the choice was a dumb choice. He means I really did not want an Internet of Things washing machine. I wanted like as dumb as it gets, old fashioned washing machine that is huh, two knobs, one button, built like a tank. Because I'm ADHD and I forget all kinds of things in my pockets. And I'm sure when we have kids, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So I wanted something that was like Becca proof. So hopefully they're delivering a tank because a tank is what I wanted. And so Joseph did not only just fall from, okay. So today Joseph was trying to install the Purple Martin birdhouse and the original birdhouse was on this pole, like this metal pole 20 feet up in the air. And please keep in mind that as I tell you this story, I was in no way, shape, or form condoning what he was doing. I tried to talk him out of it, but he is way more stubborn than I am. And sometimes he just, you just have to like go along with it. 
I mean, not always, like obviously there's bad decisions that you just say, no, I will not be a party to this, but this was one of those where it could go either way. Okay, so we have a ladder and it's one of those convertible ladders that can be an A-frame ladder or a full length ladder, but the A-frame isn't tall enough to put the birdhouse up on top of the pole. So Joseph props the, bird, the ladder on the pole and wants me to hold the ladder for him. And I'm scared to death because it's, it's a metal pole in the ground. Like it is not sturdy. It's not like propping it against the side of a house or a tree. And there's like no way, he's not a big dude, but there's no way I can catch him if he falls. And, and he's trying to get the birdhouse up on the pole and the hole in the bottom of the birdhouse is cut too small. And he's really wiggling it, trying to get it to go. And as he's wiggling the birdhouse, the pole is wiggling more and more and more. And then finally, it's like in slow motion, the pole starts to lean over from the weight of Joseph the ladder in this wooden birdhouse. And I mean, I'm terrified. I'm holding the ladder and I'm trying to hold him at an angle. Like I'm trying to prevent him from falling and bearing that I'm trying to prevent him from falling fast. I was trying to slow it down enough that he could catch himself. And he was like, what? Like six feet up in the air. It wasn't too, he wasn't too high up. It was higher than, so eight? Okay, so he's like eight or nine feet up in the air and we're watching this in slow mo, like I'm watching him and trying to catch him in slow motion while also the birdhouse is like falling now and I'm trying to not get hit with the birdhouse. And fortunately he is okay, but I thought, I thought for a minute he might die. I was terrified. Now this is like, I knew him leaning the ladder against the pole was bad news. And I told him that a couple of times before. I guess I should have been, I should have been like, absolutely not. We're not doing it like this, but he was going to do it without my help. So it was like, well, I can try to be there to help stop it from falling where I cannot be a party to this and you can do it anyway. And that was, that was our adventure today. And he's all right. But I was scared for a minute there. Yeah, the pole had rusted at the bottom, like where, where it entered the ground. So it basically, after it bent, I was able, and I am weak, I was able to <laughs> snap it back up and then snap it back over and then snap it off the base that was still in the ground. So the people who'd lived here before had left the birdhouse and the pole, we'd asked them to, but Ida had like ruined the birdhouse that they left. So we were trying to replace it. And now Joseph thinks maybe we can get that same pole back in the ground and he can put the birdhouse on top of that. And I don't like that idea. <laughs> I, I am, home ownership is exciting. We can make lots of bad choices about our health and well-being now. Hey, Weblight Dreams, welcome. Yeah, I, I was even like, look, we could just like, we could literally probably put the purple Martin house on a bench and they'd probably be happy to live there because there were a bunch of sparrows who lived there before and they've just been hanging out in the trees kind of waiting for us to get a house set up for them, a bird house for them. So I'm sure they would be happy to live in anything. Yeah, well, the thing is if they move in, you're gonna still wanna put it up. And I don't think birds would appreciate you wiggling their home on top of a pole while they're living in it. This is a really interesting color gamut for these kind of paints. So in my experience, these kind of paints tend to like, because they have a lot of optical brighteners generally, they tend to lean very pastel. And this palette was like, no, I got ideas and I kind of appreciate that. It's kind of an interesting, there's some interesting colors in here. Like this purple's really pretty. This this was like an olive green. That was really pretty. The 
Queen Gold is pretty. Now everything is drawing fairly chalky. I mean, this palette handles about what I would expect this palette to handle. Um, can it handle layering? I don't know. Probably not. It just doesn't seem, it just doesn't seem like it could really take a whole lot of like scrubbing on top of it. So it is better than I expected it to be because I expected it to be terrible. And it's almost good enough that I'm over here like, hmm, maybe I should do a field test with this later on. But you know, the part of me who has used similar palettes to this in the past, the Artist Loft ones is like, you're gonna, you know you're gonna regret that. Yeah, Jill's got it just about right. He fell off the ladder. Well, the pole died and he fell. And I'm just grateful he's not dead. And I like... Yeah, I think I stayed on the ladder all the way down. He, yeah. I don't know if that's smart or dumb. I would have tried to jump and I probably would have ended up getting my leg caught oh, and breaking it. I had just gotten the birdhouse off the pole. So I was still... Holding the birdhouse. Yeah. He's, <laughs> I am going kind of slow tonight. You're right. All right, so that is the first of the watercolors, all 36 colors swatched here for you guys. I'll set this aside for it to dry and we can probably revisit that later. All right, what you guys want to see next? I'm kind of leaning towards either the water soluble um, oil pastels or the watercolor pencils, just since we're already dealing with watercolor. What do you guys think? I I would yeah yeah. <laughs> I would not have done that ladder thing that way. I'm afraid of heights too, though. So you know, that kind of. I'm afraid of heights because I used to do some really dumb stuff up high, like in trees or on the swing set. So my fear of heights comes from having fallen many times as a child. Good, yeah, take advantage of it, draw. <laughs> I do have butterfingers and I I guess he has all right let's do those oil pastels he didn't slip he knocked the I'm not justifying I'm just explaining he knocked the whole pole down so how many oil colors do we have we have it looks like 12 we've got three sets of four so I could probably get away with two lines on here I have to say, I'm not loving the water brushes, but I, I'm not a big water brush person myself, so I, I feel like it's probably fine. No, no, the fall, no, the falling was not his fault, but I, I would like to get a taller A-frame ladder anyway, because we have, so we live, we have a one-story house, but the great room, the living room area has like a really high ceiling. So really, I'd like to rent some scaffolding because it's going to be me and my my mom up there painting. I could go. I could go ten. Um, and I'm a little afraid of heights, but I think if I was up on scaffolding, I wouldn't be afraid. So I'm trying to push that we rent some scaffolding. Isn't that how it always goes? It felt sturdy until it didn't. That's like, that's like the story. Of, and I only, I'm sorry if you didn't want me to tell the story, Joseph. I, I felt like you were kind of like seeding it. And I was like, well, that. Yeah, everybody makes mistakes. You. I mean, and I'm not encouraging people to take reckless risks by any shake of the imagination, but I am. Um, so risk adverse that I don't take good risks either. So I think there's like a fine line. Yeah, I don't think a mistake is a good idea. It has to be a 
I think the mistake was doing what he did. I, I, well, we're going to have to agree to disagree on that one. You would not catch me getting up on that ladder like that. So what you guys drawing? Dawn said, I'm doing an art challenge where I draw facial expressions. I've caught a couple of those. And Anna Danya said, we're just glad you're okay. That is the truth. I am so tempted to be bad and switch to like a regular brush, but I'm going to use the water brushes. We're going to, we're going to stick with it. So obviously there was no color or pigment information, I think, for the 36 color set. I'm not seeing it. So we have no, any kind of information for that. I am going to grab the oil pastels. I'm going to do them in sets of four. Y'all know I got to smell the art supplies. Oh, it smells like an art supply store. I mean, the whole kit smells like wood, which is a good smell. Um, and the individual supplies do have a tendency to like smell like they're individual things. So we're looking at the water soluble oil pastels. It says oil pastel and Arteza. It's also, I thought it had the color name on here. There we go. A200 Vermilion. Something I noticed with the last kit though, is this naming scheme doesn't necessarily seem to be consistent across all their lines. At least in the other kit, there, was, there were some discrepancies between the gouaches and the metallics and the acrylics and the watercolors. And it also says American Company, designed in the USA, manufactured in the People's Republic of China. These are non-toxic, so that tells me like if there were a cadmium red in this set, for example, it would not be made with real cadmium. So far, pretty soft and buttery, which is what I want to see from oil pastels. I don't want them to be too waxy or too stiff. And so Joseph pointed out earlier, he asked if it would be kind of a conflict to have water soluble oil pastels. And I mean, yeah, generally oil and water don't mix, but then again, neither do wax and water. So wax is usually a resist for like watercolors. I'm gonna switch, this is the small, I'm gonna switch it out for the large head. Day, uh, I am drawing all the day by daylight killers. It's day by, dead by daylight killers. It's a horror video game. Cool. Oh, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Weblight Dreams is drawing all the dead by daylight killers. Oh, cool. Okay, so it it's like, technically water soluble. Like we are getting some movement, but I'm also seeing a division between where the water, look at this orange. So I'm like kind of having to scrub. Now maybe I should be using a stiffer brush, but this is one of the reasons I don't use water soluble crayons and water soluble uh, oil pastels or like new pastels too much is I just, I want, like, what I want is I want a watercolor crayon that is, like, immediate, smooth, clean activation, like a Derwent Ink Tense. And I just don't think anybody really makes those. So it's just not as immediate as I would like. All right, so that was Vermilion, Blood Orange, Pumpkin Orange, and Apricot. Now they do feel really buttery and they feel like they would blend well with each other and I can test that out. But I'm not super impressed with the water solubility. Yeah, I am moving slow tonight because it's, it's nearing eight and I started at six. We just have a lot to look at and a lot to talk about. So here's the next set. We've got white quartz. We've got... Lemon yellow, cerulean blue, 
and sky blue. I feel like these are corresponding though with some of the colors we saw yesterday in terms of the color number. So maybe it's not consistent across Arteza or maybe they changed the names, but the color is still the same. We wouldn't be able to tell with the white if they activate, so I'm not gonna really bother with that one. And the other three though, I mean, they're nice and buttery. They smell, they smell good like oil pastels should smell. They're pretty opaque, which is, you know, I would expect that. I mean, honestly though, I would say they're probably on par with Sakura Crepa, which I like Crepa, that's, that's what I grew up with, but Crepa isn't necessarily, I mean, you can use them if you're an adult, but generally in the US, I think they're like more of a children's art class medium. So they're probably not as light fast. They're probably not as richly pigmented. They're probably not using as good a binder. That doesn't make them terrible. Just, just things to keep in mind. Man, I have not done anything with oil pastel in a long time. It just doesn't seem like, like they are somewhat water soluble. It just doesn't seem like water is necessarily like the, the best solvent to get what you want out of these. Mungyo water soluble oil pastels. I have not tried those. I have tried their watercolors and I have tried, I think I used to use their, either their artist chalks or their oil pastels, but I've never tried them with water. Uh, Cindy says the Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 are excellent water soluble wax crayons. They do have this little palette that has some tooth that you can scrape the pigment to activate with water. So years ago I ordered some, but they got, they were left out in the Louisiana heat by the delivery guy. So when I swatched them, they were terrible, but I kind of think the heat ruined them. Oh, these are not as staining as the watercolors were either. And uh, not, not a lot of movement with these with the water. I'd, I will have to like actually buy some at David's, which is the local art supply store and give them a shot. And that way I can guarantee they won't be left on my porch at least. Or I guess, ooh, okay, so the black actually has pretty good quick activation. And that was walnut brown, concrete gray, grass green, and onyx black. So something I noticed is that with sort of art supply kits aimed at younger artists, they love cramming in what they call oil pastels, but they turn out to be basically just crayons. Like the Creatology kits that they sell at Michael's, <laughs> those things are terrible. And uh, they're just full of crayons, basically. Crayons and cheap markers. So we have peony pink, apple green, Sunflower yellow, and then ultramarine blue. And Anna said, had the same problem with mine at first, Florida, and had to get Amazon to replace them. See, I don't even know if I, who I ordered them from. That was years ago, but yeah, I should have been smart and been like, yeah, these are right damage. I've gotten much better about getting on Amazon when stuff arrives damaged now. They, they, well, yes and no. Their chat's really nice though, and they usually can solve the problem. What is frustrating is that you can't cancel a return, which I know most people probably aren't. I clicked the wrong thing. I was on my phone. No, I, I um, messaged, yeah, I chatted with them, and I thought I'd resolved it. No, they did cancel it for me. I couldn't cancel it for myself. Um, but then I got an email saying I was like still going to be charged. So I got on, I, I messaged them again and supposedly it's been resolved. I have an email saying it's been resolved. Yeah, these, man, water soluble is not necessarily a word I would associate with these just overall. Am I plugged in? Still good. Yes. They're just not very water soluble. 
very water soluble, not a lot of movement. And I would want to see more movement from these. So that's another kind of complaint I have about these sort of companies that basically buy these art supplies from other companies and then put their own label on them is the sort of information that could be really useful to tell me what I could expect out of a product, like what binders you're using. That is always separate. So like, like let's talk about Arteza watercolor. They sell a few different watercolors. They sell them in tubes. They sell them in half pans. They sell the metallic ones. They sell these cake things. And I could not tell you what the binder is for any of them. And the binder actually plays a pretty big role in how paints are gonna handle, how easily they're gonna activate. Are they gonna re like turn to mud basically as you add additional layers? Okay, that red. So I guess the word is inconsistent with these. These are not, uh, see, look, no movement. And I mean, I think they have a, a what's the word, a reason, a, an incentive to not necessarily include that information. I mean, they don't want you turning around and ordering them from, you know, the person, the company that makes them cheaper. Like there are a lot of companies that actually work with white labeling. So like Simiart, Mungyo, oh, Superior, they all, offer white labeling surface services where they'll manufacture the product and then you can put whatever label you want on them. So it really wouldn't serve Arteza to say who they're working with, but it would help for me as an artist to know what the binders are. Check the chat. Check the chat. Don said, I'm using the Crayola Color of the World markers and pencils, and they are really not good, but I love the colors. I actually bought the markers, the color pencils, and the crayons for the same reason. I really appreciate that Crayola is taking skin tones really seriously and making them more accessible to more people. Anna said, the Liras will melt. The Liras melt well too. Okay, so we're talking about watercolor pencils. I mean, watercolor crayons slash oil, water soluble oil pastels that are pretty good. Uh, Bugsy said, asked how the watercolor cakes were. Better than I expected them to be. Um, they're still pretty opaque, but the color selection's really pretty. So they're, they're on that, like, I might go back to these and try to paint a field test with them. I, so for both kits, I want to create a piece of art using the materials in the kit. I mean, that's, I mean, that's a duh, but you know how it is when the, the supplies are really terrible. You're like, oh, I don't know about that. And I might actually use those watercolors in the test. Jill said, I got regular color pencils that were more water soluble than these. Yeah, these don't want to move. So I'm not, okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do a blend test because I do think these actually will blend into each other. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab some colors that are monochromatic and seem like they would blend well into each other. I'll read them to you in a second. I don't wanna break them as I'm pulling them out. So. Y'all can't see it. I wish I had a side cam. I will eventually though. The, the, the way they're in the case, they're really kind of tight, which is good. It does prevent them from breaking, but I'm kind of concerned that they'll break as I'm pulling them out. And they also leave schmutz, which, I mean, oil pastels do leave schmutz, but. Okay, so that is lemon yellow. Okay, they're pretty buttery. And this is just on the watercolor paper. This isn't, you know, the mixed media paper or a paper with more tooth. If I had a paper that had more tooth to work with tonight, I think these would work a little bit better. They are buttery. They're not terrible oil pastels. They're just not water soluble. I'm gonna try to blend them. Okay. So far, so far, okay. Like not, not the best. Crayon might be a little bit better. 
And these would really pop on a black paper or a black canvas, but I think the black paper they've included just doesn't have enough tooth for it. So there's some blending, but they're kind of schmutzy. Let's see if like adding water helps. A little, because some of them do start to melt down a little bit. But I feel like that's kind of like a, when I, a technique of last resort, because you are kind of melting the color down a little bit, it does kind of create a smoother gradient between them and then you could let it dry and then you could paint, or I'm sorry, use the oil pastels on top of it to get something closer to what you're looking for. But those are, those are not, they just aren't doing it for me. They're not really that good. So before I switch over to the watercolor pencils, I'll bring back. So these were the cake watercolors that so you guys can see. There's definitely some chalkiness to them, especially as they dry. I'm really not surprised at all though, because they're very cheap watercolors and that's something that those kind do. What I do like though, is the color selection in this palette is more vibrant colors, more earth tone colors, more kind of tropical colors and not as many pastels. So I do actually think like if you like the artist ones, like artist loft ones like this, you'll pro probably like these okay. I don't, I mean, part of me felt so stupid when the artist loft ones were so popular because it was one of those, and I've talked about this in some of the videos. Um, I'm weird because I'll, I'll, I will review something and give it an honest shot. And sometimes I don't like it and other, other people do. And part of me is like, am I just dumb? Am I just missing out? Like, do I, am I just boo-boo the clown and I don't know what I'm looking at? Which I shouldn't do that, but you know, I think that's also kind of human as a social animal kind of thing where we see other people like it. So we think we should have to like it. And that's why I don't watch other people's reviews before I do mine because I don't want to prejudice myself into liking something I just didn't like. Okay, so since we're on a watercolor kick, I'm going to go ahead and do the premium watercolor pencils. I really wonder if they have expert watercolor pencils. I've been pretty curious about these, especially since I did that big watercolor showdown last year. So I'm not going to do the Copic. I'm not going to test for opacity. I am going to take a quick bathroom break and clean these out good. And then we will do the Arteza color pencils. Watercolor pencils, Becca, come on.
So I was thinking about it and instead of using the watercolor paper, maybe I should use the mixed media paper and that'll give us a chance to start, start working with that. Ugh. I have to make the old lady noises, I just do. I wrecked myself by working on the floor for all those years. So now it's, now it's the law. So I was actually thinking specifically of my Rosa Galleria field test. So spoilers, I actually didn't like them. I thought I would like them. And they just did not handle the way I thought they would at all. I couldn't layer. I couldn't build up on top of wet into wet. They were just not it. I'm going to remove this from the pad. Uh, you know, so normally with these kind of perforated sheets, I would fold it along the perforation and then tear it because it makes it easier to remove cleanly. But you know, not everybody does that. So I'm going to test it out the other way to see if we can, so it tears into the spiral. That's not the biggest deal. Let's just see. Okay, so we end up, and that's actually not a big deal. I would rather it tear along the spiral binding because you can clean that up then tear into the paper. Jill says, I have an old set of the Arteza Expert watercolor pencils and they're all right. They don't blend as smoothly as the Albert Durer pencils, but they work better than I thought they would. Next time Arteza has a sale that's like a, like a sale sale, I'll probably end up getting them. Something else I don't necessarily love about Arteza is whenever I'm on there and I'm looking to just get like 12 colors to review or like a smaller set to review, it's like they're all sold out of those sets and all they have is like the 172 color set. And I'm like, I, a, I do not want to swatch 172 colors. I would be an old lady by the time I finish that. And B, I don't want to spend all that money and then what if I don't like them? So this is the mixed media paper. I went ahead and just removed the drawer that seemed to work. So I'm, I'm going to stick with it. I'd like to not start with white since it doesn't want to show up. Okay. So these are their watercolor pencils. They have a triangular body. It feels very light in the hand, like Crayola light. Not necessarily, but I'm going to put the ones I've done backwards. Ooh, I mean, I cleaned it out, so it's not purple. It's just my first, my first instinct was like, oh no, it's, it's nasty. Um, okay. So it does activate, but with the water brushes, I think maybe the water brush is picking up a lot of that pigment and we're losing some of that pigment. So I, I don't know. They're okay. I feel like after having swatched a grand total of two, I kind of feel like these might be on par with like new Prismacolor watercolor pencils, which are overpriced for what they are. So I would, I would definitely be open to trying the expert ones. <laughs> hey, I need more than a week to do this. You got cats. I, I have, I ha okay, yeah, Dax, who doesn't even live with us, Dax is totally going to do it. I think Bowie's more likely to. Would he use his tail or He would use his mouth. Because remember, he tries to drink watercolor water. He used to. We do not let him, by the way. These these are okay. Um, I feel like the Artist Loft kit I reviewed a couple years ago had watercolor pencils in them, and they were way worse. But this is one of those things too, where I think I would not. I'm not going to be able to like give you guys a definitive answer until I like try to make a piece of art with it and butt my head against trying to layer and trying to pull details and all of the saturation turning to mud. 
which is what happened with the Rosa Gallery for colors. And I felt, I don't know, this is on me, okay? But like, like I try to avoid other people's reviews, but I do like to follow other YouTube artists on Instagram to see what kind of art they're making. And Lindsay made such beautiful art with hers that I was like, maybe I got a bad batch. Or maybe the way I handle them just isn't, it's just not a good fit. Oh, that pink ain't even moving. Look at that. Can y'all see that? Kinda, y'all can kinda see that. Oh, I'm sorry. I tried to, it was so dark, I tried to lighten it just a little bit. All right, save that battery, Hema. I'll see you later. Uh, Don said, I'm sorry I am neat or organizing person. I have a system and like ordin, ordin sorry, can't read tonight, and like things orderly, but I stress if it is not. I am like that about my art supplies, and I would like to be, I'm going to fix the camera, that's why I'm being all weird. Um, I would like to be a more organized person in general, but I, I find I get like over, oh, it is blown out. I feel like I get very overwhelmed, and then I kind of like stagnate, you know, like I lose. Okay, that'll be better. It'll take a second for it to show up. Okay, that's a little bit better. Oh, it's time to feed Bowie. Would you feed him if you haven't? The boy is hungry. So they're okay. They're very dusty as well. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'm not a big fan of when color pen watercolor pencils are dusty. And you lose a lot of color when you add water. But again, I'm not super sure if that's the water brush or if it's the pencils, or it could also be the paper. Uh, this is the mixed media paper. It has some tooth to it though. But yeah, these... Sorry, I didn't wanna like blow out those eardrums with sneezes. Yeah, Jill, I feel that. That's actually where I'm at with the studio right now. So Jill said, my biggest obstacle to be more organized was that I was forever trying to arrive at the perfect system. Um, and I know there's no such thing as a perfect system, but I have tried for my, like for my art supplies, I have tried so many different systems and they just, like they work in, oh, and that's the door. Joseph, did you hear the doorbell? No. I know you are. Uh, Give, give me a second. Sorry about that, y'all. Oh, you got it? Thank you. Just bad timing. So the number one thing I've noticed with these so far, they're a little dry, they're a little chalky. Um, that could be 100% whatever binder they're using. But look, like, I don't know if y'all can see that, but that ultramarine blue, once you add water, no movement, no color. So these kind of handle 
I mean, like, they, it's like they know they're supposed to be watercolor pencils, but they're not really feeling it. They're not really up to the task of it. So Weblight says, I organize my drawers by types of supplies. Like that's the, I feel like that's the dream. That, like lots of flat files where you can have it just all like laid out where you can see it because seeing it is the big thing or um, like glass front cabinets. And I've seen all these pictures online of like these organizers that go on your wall and they're like clear acrylic and they're supposed to hold your like color pencils. And I think those are... I love that, but I can't find them. Or, I mean, I haven't seen those in years, but, or when I could find them, they were like real, on these like boutique-y sites that seemed a little Shopify-y, where they might be doing drop shipping, and they seemed very expensive for what they were. Jill said, I arrived at a place where I have my most used supplies within arm's reach, and then I put everything else anywhere it fits. That was me and Norco. That's probably going to be me again. We're trying to win an auction on these like map drawers. So there are these big, deep, flat drawers that are good for storing paper or would be really good for storing colored pencils or markers. You could just like have them all laid out. Um, and those are actually going to have to go in a, not even in this room, not because this room is too small necessarily, but because they're so big, they would end up taking up like the whole room. I have anxiety inducing organized chaos. It seems I can never get there. I'm, I'm dealing with that right now. Um, even just talking about it with my mom today, I started to feel like that panicky feeling, which is, it's not, you know, it's like, like I have to remind myself, like it's not life or death. I'm not gonna die if they're not organized. I'm not gonna die if they're not organized this year. It's just gonna be messy. But, and I'm not like a super, I wish I was a super neat person, but I just am not a super neat person. So I. I don't know. Um, I think I think a lot of it actually has to do with like like the internet, the internet, and like looking at other and okay, like I know what the internet presents and what reality is are two very different things. I know that, but like you see other art YouTubers and some of them, their studios are just like so like beautiful, aspirational. So I mean. To, like in my head, I have to, I'm kind of like, well, they probably don't actually use it because it would be a mess. If it were me, it would be a mess. But I still see that and I'm like, that's what I want. And I want, I want a filming space that's so pretty. But then, you know, I might be giving you guys the same anxiety that I have over this. Jill said, I would love to get a set of map drawers. Good luck. So what we're doing is we're bidding on a, it's either a government auction or a library auction, government au auction. Um, sometimes schools will auction those things too. I also would like either a set of old card catalogs or um, an apothecary cabinet because like watercolor tubes could sort them by color. I hope we get it, but there's like three other people bidding on it, so I don't I don't know if we're gonna get it. Uh, Dawn said, I am sure when your body gets extremely tired, your brain won't care. If the color pencils are not in order, you will go to sleep, girl. <laughs> that <laughs> That's a good reminder for myself as well, because I'll I promise you, when I'm laying in bed going to sleep at night and I'm having anxiety. It is not over like, are my Copics in order? That is a very specific problem. I, I am more worried about like a family member who has lung cancer, but it's treatable or like how stressed out my mom's been lately or, you know, like real stuff. Not, not that anxiety isn't real. I and mean, anxiety loves to prey on sometimes the dumbest things it can to make it into like, a reason to be anxious but 
No, that's only when I'm awake and things are going good that my brain is like, oh yeah, how are you going to organize your studio? Time to stress out. Uh, and Jill said, I can't even walk through my studio at the moment. If it makes anyone else feel better, I'm packing to move, but there's no space to put the box to fill it. <laughs> that was me and Norco. Oh my God. It does actually make me feel better. So I would like to do this and I might do it on my discord where it's a safe space. Um, I would love to like share photos of our, like real photos of our workspaces. Uh, Cause I think A, it could maybe provide some good ideas for people um, like what actually works and B, it could make everybody feel a little bit better maybe about the mess. Yeah, these turn to like nothing when they get wet. There's just like no oomph, they got no bones. So I'm gonna do a color wheel like I did when I was reviewing all of those. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pre-select my colors. Oh, we've only got one red and it's like a tomato red. I think I'm gonna have to get some more in the middle colors. So they get used up kind of quick. Turn it, I forgot. So normally what I would do with these color wheels is I would do two reds, two yellows, two blues, and see if they can kind of naturally mix those secondary colors. But even though we have, what is that, 24 colors to select from, we don't necessarily have like a cooler red, for example. So, and the pink is like hot pink. So I'm gonna cheat a little and use a purple as kind of that intermediary color. Oh, that is a very blue purple. Oh, that is not purple at all. That is blue. So the ultramarine blue is a little bit warm, cooler than I was kind of expecting. And then, I don't know, maybe, well, there isn't really a good cool blue either. We have peacock blue, which is really more like a sky blue or a cerulean blue, but not really like, you know, a good, I, like, I would think of like a good cool blue. Sorry if I'm being kind of quiet. <laughs> I'll get chatty again once once I get used to like, you know, having somebody else in the house and talking to myself kind of sort of not really. It'd be even worse if I wasn't doing a stream, if I was just talking to the camera. Okay, so very dusty. And these are the colors that I use for the color wheel. I'm not actually gonna 
you know, spend y'all's time doing all the secondary mixes and stuff that I would normally do. Um, I would really like to see Arteza do a set where they, it's all the premium, like not the premium, you know, the expert products. Cause these are, I mean, they're, they're student grade and not the student grade doesn't have an important place, but Don't, don't know y'all. I well, I make when I'm doing the color pencil test. I make well. I can explain it though. That could be useful for somebody who's like, why is she doing that? It's just kind of to, it tests a lot of different things. So it kind of tests um, how well these colors mix. If I can mix secondary colors out of them, uh, how how much bones they got, how much oof they got, how much actual pigment is going on, how much the pigment is willing to move, how much the pigment, um, like how, how good a coverage we can get. I mean, obviously we can mix it green because I put a green down on there. Yeah, yeah, the premium is not premium. I just wanna, that I've complained about their color name scheme before uh, because it doesn't reflect what we're, what we're getting. So the colors that I use for this are the lighter, cooler yellow would be lemon yellow. The warmer yellow is turmeric yellow. The red is tomato red. The purple is amethyst purple. The ultramar the blue is ultramarine blue, and it's a cooler ultramarine than I was really expecting. The peacock, uh, the cooler blue is peacock blue, and that was lighter than I was expecting. I was hoping for kind of like a phthalo. Now there is a, what is that, indigo blue. I guess that's that one. That's really cool too. This is more like a phthalo than an indigo. So also how they're naming these colors doesn't necessarily make a whole lot of sense to me. So I'm kind of disappointed with their premium watercolor pencils. Uh, bah, 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 bah. So what we have next, is the papers. Um, we also have the color pencils. We have the regular pencils. We have the erasers and we have the right, the white gel pens. So now that we've kind of done a lot of like different water media, it's kind of up to what you guys want to see. I mean, the water brushes perform like water brushes. They're not leaking all over the place. They're not, you know, poorly made or anything like that. I'm just not super, super into water brushes. I mean, to me, the word premium implies like high, high quality. Um, and I wouldn't say that they're high quality. The, the mixed media paper is fine. It's a thinner mixed media paper, so, um, that's not, oh yeah, I almost forgot. Let's, let's actually go ahead and take a look at the Iconic pins. I almost forgot about these because they're not in the thing and they've got their own tint. So I'll put our tray over to the side for now. Don't let me forget about it. And we'll get started with the Iconic pins, which are probably very similar to Stabilo pins. And uh, Dawn said, those persons with a tidy studio have two, one to show and the other, I would put money in the other for storage. I would bet. I've also seen people do what the, the clean corner. So like you have it angled. So you have like this little five foot radius and it's clean and the camera points into the clean corner and then the rest of the room is chaos. 
which it feels about right. Or you throw a, like a green sheet or a white sheet up behind you and like the rest of the room is a mess. And Don also said uh, that I could share those in Patreon. So I should, it's a mess I'll, and not set up, I'll share it. Uh, hopefully it makes other people feel better. I am a nurse when I had a long day and extremely tired and husband made a cat pie of hurricane in the kitchen. I go to bed, I'll deal with it in the morning. I wish I could do that, but Bowie will help himself to the sink buffet. And Jill said the expert watercolor pencils are definitely better than these. Okay, I th well, yeah, I think I will, at some point I'll catch a sale and I'll be able to compare them. Yes, colored fine liners to sketch. I hope they are alcohol marker proof because I love doing colored line art with alcohol markers. I'm just gonna try out a few of the techniques they talked about just to see. Um, they don't have the color name written on them, but they do have the color number, which I don't know, maybe I just didn't understand uh, the other ones or I wasn't paying enough attention. I'm gonna go through their site and see if I can figure out if they, the color, that's something they should release if they haven't, is a color chart with the numbers and all the names if they're, if they're standardized across the brand. They write okay, good ink flow. Um, Y'all cannot see anything, unfortunately, because I've got it still very bright as the sun and I'm working with very light colors. So I appreciate your imaginations. Ugh, even that, and this is like a yellow ochre or a burnt sienna kind of skin tone color. Let me see if he's picking it up. Sort of, okay. All right, at least I'll have it in post. Uh... Anna said, I almost choked on my soda at Sink Buffet, LOL, mine too. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm not the only one because he, he is on a diet. He would eat nonstop if he could. And the vet is always getting on us that he needs to lose some weight. And it's like, you tell this cat that. And Jill said, what kind of paper do you recommend for fine liners? So smooth Bristol probably would be, I like Smooth Bristol for a lot of things though, especially for like markers. Um, have you tried the Tombow Fudenosuke? I, or am I just like too much of a brush pin person? They're, I mean, they're okay. Um, what I would like is more grip up here because it is a little bit challenging to pull off the cap. If you have problems with arthritis, these are gonna, that is gonna be an area you're gonna kind of struggle with. Something else they could do is just put more of a texture on the cap or whoever is manufacturing them could put more of a texture on the cap. <sighs> Potato salad, he's a cat. He is also, he has also eaten lemon cake before, which we didn't think he would eat. We have to put the bread in the pantry because he will get into bread. He will fight for beignets, which are just fried dough. To be fair, his origin story was that he was either found at a graveyard or at a Taco Bell or at a McDonald's. And given how crazy he acts for McDonald's or Taco Bell, that there's some, there's some, Credence to that story. Oh, and then, so Dax comes to visit pretty often. Dax is my mom's kitten. Um, they rescued him from a tire well at an O'Reilly's. And when Dax was eating kitten food all the time, I mean, Bowie was like half feral for kitten food. Like he is not, uh, he doesn't really growl at us. He doesn't really like grouse at us all that much. He complains a little bit, but you know, like he's a big teddy bear of a cat. But when it came to him and kitten food, he would fight you for that kitten food. Fortunately, Dax is being weaned onto adult cat food. So it's not as big of a fight, but. 
Cindy said, I have three chunks. It's impossible to get them on a diet. Yeah, <laughs> especially with multiples. Uh, when we had three, we had to, mic put, you know the microchips that go on their collar? So two of them needed to eat because they were old lady cats. And uh, so they, and they were on special kidney diet, which Bowie thought was like, other than kitten food, kidney diet is like the best food in the entire world. And we had to put a special little microchip collar that talked to their feeder so that Bowie couldn't sneak special old lady cat kidney food. And Jill said, mine broke into our trash can from broccoli. <laughs> You, we bring Bowie outside pretty regularly on a halter and a leash, and he grazes like a little goat. And Dawn said, Tombo is partnering with my local art store. That's cool. So you're looking forward to trying the food and no skin pen. Yes. I highly recommend them. They take a little bit of getting used to. Um, if you're not used to brush pins, any brush pin takes getting used to. And if you're used to brush pins, they're a little bit harder, like a, they have a firmer nib. So um, I think they're probably a good starter brush pin. I do like the colors that Arteza includes. Like I'm a big, my mom calls it like baby puke green, but I love these kind of like celery or avocado greens, green gold. Can't just diet one cat. Nope, nope, nope. They're all on a diet. My girl needs a diet, but if I don't leave food out, my boy will do the scarf and barf. That was happy too. Oh my goodness. What is, what? they act like they're gonna be abandoned when there has never been any indication that they're gonna be abandoned. And just said, I'm fascinated to hear about the chipped collar food bowl combo. What a cool idea. Um, Joseph can definitely tell you more about it. Uh, I was, I'll just tell you what I was disappointed by because that's the theme of this channel. Um, for the price, I thought the build quality was kind of flimsy and Bowie could actually break into the model we had because it was a hinged door that slid over the food and it wasn't all that sturdy. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He also would like try to sneak in while one of them was eating. Yeah, we're not using, yeah, we're not using it anymore. Mostly because it's just Bowie. And uh, we used to open feed him, but as he got older and after the two girls passed away of old age, he's, he will just eat all day if he, if he can get away with it. But I mean, the chip, it's, you know those like tile trackers? It's, it's the same kind of thing, except not GPS. So it's not too big. It's, it's small enough to go on their collar. And basically when the feeder senses that thing entering. So the way ours is, is, is it had like this ring, like Stargate. And <laughs> they'd poke their head in to eat and it would open the, the latch. But cats like to smell their food, so it was hard for ours to realize there was food about. Okay, so I am looking to see if there's any resist, if there's any color movement, if the, I should have chosen a lighter color. It doesn't seem to be moving or smearing, so these do seem like they are probably alcohol marker proof, which is good. Generally, if it's not water safe, it's probably alcohol marker safe, with the exception of things that are both, fortunately. I say, like, that's true words of wisdom. If it's not one thing, then it's the other. Yeah, I'm not seeing any color movement, though, so that's good. I 
and, and y'all notice I did not give it any dry time. Normally, I, if I ink something, I let it dry overnight. And part of that is just to let my hand rest. And part of it is because I found that if I'm inking on top of something I've penciled and I don't let the ink cure on the paper and then I go to erase it, it'll pull up a lot of the, a lot of the ink. But also it just tends to become a little bit more marker or watercolor safe after it's had a chance to dry overnight. And it gives me a chance to scan stuff and share it on Patreon. So, you know, win, 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 win. Yeah, it doesn't look like any color movement. So hopefully you guys can see that. One day, one day we'll, we'll do like big Zoom sessions. I have to get over my anxiety first. I would like to do that. Like that's something uh, Feather mentioned in Discord doing like group chats, like vocal chats. And I think that would be really fun, but I have to get over my anxiety. And Dawn, there's nothing wrong with not being super into cats. I, I like dogs as well. Uh, not so much little dogs that like aren't trained. I used to live in an area where if we went for like a walk, people did not sing with their dogs. So their dogs would be out chasing us, growling at us. So that's the only kind of dogs I don't like is a, is a mean dog. But in our neighborhood now, there's so many nice, cute dogs. So many, we walked, went for a walk before the stream today and so many friendly dogs came up just to say hi. So I'm just kind of grabbing a few different colors just to see if any of them are, are water soluble. I don't think they will be. I mean, I do think they will be. What? Yeah, there we go. So the camera is probably not doing the best job picking it up, but they are at least a little water soluble, but not, it's not full movement either. It would be what the fountain pen community calls waterproof, where it's still very legible after it's gotten wet. So, oh, now, now so on some of them, it's gonna be hard to see. Now that the water's kind of sat on top of it, I am getting a little bit more movement, but it's still, you know, legible. Those lines are still there. So somewhere in between, not too bad. Um, I, I, I could see myself painting over it to use it for like a special technique, like it might add some color to it. And they handled okay. They handled like 0.4 millimeter fine liners. So if you like fine liners, these are fine. And um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't necessarily have a lot to say about fine liners until I've like actually inked something. Suzy or Suzy. Oh, I like pit bulls. They have such expressive faces. They're very cute. Okay, so what we have left is the colored pencils, the pencils, and the gel pens. So we're actually moving along. And I think for the color pencils, I'm actually going to swatch them on the black paper. And not that that will tell us any, you know, any special information, but it'll look cool. And I'll also demonstrate the frame again. Mirrors. I get actually, I think that's a really good idea giving y'all mirrors for your desks because it hits a point where I don't know, I don't know about y'all, but like I started to feel. I'm going a little bit crazy. And these are all triangular bodies as well.
and it looks like it's not exactly the same colors, like some of the, the lighter colors are different than the uh, watercolor pencils, but there are a lot of the same colors as the watercolor pencils. And I promise when I do the time-lapse version of this, I will um, list whatever pigment information. I don't think there's any pig pigment information for this one, but I'll list whatever information I can find. And I'll also mention if the, oh no, these are not as opaque as I was hoping. I wonder if it's cause the paper is so, so smooth. Like there's no tooth to it. They feel kind of buttery on this paper. You know what? Do y'all want to see me do it on both the black and the white or just the black or just the white? I can do both. Um, I don't think this, given that there's no tooth, we're not getting much opacity. So I don't think this is like a really good reflection of the colors, but it is an accurate depiction of how the colors look on the black paper. At least that lighter paint is a little bit, a little bit better suited for it. Yeah, it's the black paper that they sent. So what I'm doing is um, the duplicates between the two sets, I'm leaving them packaged and I'll either uh, do a giveaway or donate them to Art Squad. I could see the black paper being very popular with Art Squad because it folds into a frame. Now on the plus side, I haven't had any shattering yet. And you guys see, I just slammed my pencils down, uh, but I haven't tried sharpening them. And that for me, like one of the, I like using color pencils for underdrawings and sketches, but I've moved away from using Prismacolor for the most part, because when I sharpen them, they just snap. And it's because the core, especially if you're getting them open socket like Michael's where people are dropping them, uh, the core will end up snap the whole, like snap, 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 snap. And, um, or the sharpener itself will snap them. And I've heard that you can microwave them and that like melts the core and then it re-solidifies, but I haven't tried that. And I just, now I just bulk order Blick color pencils in terracotta because that's the color I like to use for underdrawing anyway. Dawn said you love use the black paper especially like how I wanted to get it at one time. I think and I didn't use the gouache on this because it doesn't it doesn't have any texture um, but I think either the gouache or the metallics would show up a little bit better on these. I'm not gonna do the black on the black paper because that's not gonna not gonna mean anything. Do I need a special sharpener for triangular pencils? No, I mean, no. I've always used the if I have any handy, I'll show you. I've always used the Coom sharpeners. They're magnesium sharpeners because those are really really sharp and they do a really good job cutting. So generally, I found that when I'm sharpening triangular pencils, how it, let me see if I can demonstrate, but probably not. The way it interacts with the sharpener, it's, it doesn't necessarily make all that much of a difference is what I've noticed, but it, they can be a little harder to sharpen. In fact, well, this one's already pretty sharp, but I'm already noticing that it wants to kind of skip along the sides. But that sharpener is also not really that sharp. Ooh, it must be cold up there in Detroit. So I'm also gonna swatch their, col their color pencils on their regular paper, because this isn't really a very good indication of what those colors probably look like.
I like those sharpeners. Are those pencils okay? They look a bit dull. They are a bit dull. They basically arrive dull. Um, they've got that flat point that a lot of um, like factory sharpened pencils have. And you know, so I'm not the biggest color pencil person in general uh, for like coloring because it, it just tends to trigger my arthritis, but I do really like very buttery color pencils. So like uh, oil-based leads instead of wax-based leads and um, like Derwent's Pro Color or Color, they're Color Soft. I think they've rebranded it to Pro Color. Those I really liked. Uh, Crayola had like the Crayola Signature oil ones. Those were pretty good too. These I think are gonna be an arthritis trigger for me. Teagal Sharpener. Oh yeah, yeah. So the one like the color pencil setting where it's not as long and as sharp. Yeah, that's one of the big things with most color pencils is you can't really use like a cranky <laughs> style one. Those will just eat them. And you have to, I think it's better to like use a nicer sharpener with them because the cheaper sharpeners tend to be dull and break them. It's so, wow, why did you not have a coat up there? It's Detroit. I'm glad you have one now, it sounds like. I haven't tried the Lumina Luminance yet. I would like to, I need more art friends down here that I can like share art supplies with. Uh, Allie, when I lived in Nashville, we would do exchanges where she'd let me borrow her stuff and that was great because I could review stuff without having to commit to it. I mean, I, I also, you know, return the favor. No? No. I mean, different people like different things. Like we were talking about that earlier where I was, I, I have this weird dumb guilt complex and it, it is kind of dumb because I know better uh, about like if, other artists like an art supply and I don't like it, I always wonder if like I'm missing out on something. So. Now people did used to complain. I've actually had to change how I talk about things on here because people complained in the past that I came across as really elitist when I wasn't, that wasn't my intention. So I've tried to be really, um, you know, very deliberate about what I'm saying and also acknowledge that different people have access to different things. And, you know, there are artists who can make really gorgeous things with Crayola watercolors. I can't, not, not me with Crayola watercolors, but I have seen it and I'm just like, you are a wizard. So there we have the frame. And I should have waited till I did the, the gel pens, but I can do the gel pens right now. So my, my, my personal preference for gel pens is the Signo white gel pens. But as I've mentioned in the past, I find uh, I have a lot of trouble with gel pens because they tend to clog up and die. But Heidi suggested last week that you soak them in warm water. So out of the gate, they write okay, there is a little bit of railroading. Uh, let's see if I can show you guys where you get that like faint middle line where the ball rolled. But if you go slower, it's not a problem. So it's just for fast lines. So that is the point six. Here is the point eight. That is the point 0.8. And then this would be the 1.0. Ah, the difficult one. So, so, so far these all write pretty well. Uh, to me though, the true test, the true test with gel pins is a week from now 
will they still write as well? But knowing that I can dip them in warm water and that helps, actually helps a lot. So, putting them back in their spots. I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna grab some more mixed media paper. And we're gonna try those color pencils again on color paper this time. Okay, so the mixed media paper does have more tooth and these are dusty so far. Would not call them necessarily like buttery. I'm gonna, let me, okay, they do blend. Actually, they blend quite readily. I don't think the camera's gonna do a good job capturing that, but so far, easy to blend. It did not come with a blender pencil. I know some people will use a white color pencil to kind of help blend it out. But I've also found that you can just buy like Prismacolor blender pencils if you want to and or other brands blender pencils on their own and then use that to help blend. So I, if it were me, I would be hesitant to use white as the blender. I, that's what I used to use when I was a younger artist. Um, and there's nothing wrong with, you know, using what you got. But I, I found at the time that it added white to it. So if you want to add white, then that works. But if you're coloring something dark and you don't necessarily want to add white, then, you know, getting up. Because the blender pencils are just the core of whatever it's made of, whatever binder they're using, minus the pigment. So you're not adding any extra color. You're just adding the the binder. I mean they blend okay on the mixed media paper. They are very very dusty though. I don't know if you guys can see it so I will I'm pressing fairly hard. I'm not uh, using a super light hand with these. That's one of my one of the reasons me and color pencils don't get along so well is I do tend to bear down really hard on art supplies that'll you know accommodate that. Now I know they do have I think an expert line of color pencils that are supposedly pretty good. Um, I'm sure they're better than these. Not that these are the worst, but they're okay. They're not as waxy and hard as like Prismacolors are, which is good. You know, they're a little bit buttery and softer than that, but they're not necessarily as buttery or, and soft as I would like. And I am still getting a lot, even though I'm bearing down kind of hard, I'm still getting a lot of like the white feedback of the paper. But I can blend the colors, so. And it's not a perfect blend either. It's not like a seamless blend. I don't know that I have the, <laughs> it might be, that might be possible. I don't know if I have the patience for that. Um, it does to me, the way I color, it's not seeming like that is a natural state for these. Like even going over this area, I'm still getting some white feedback. Odorless mineral spinets. Not spinach, spirits to blend. Yeah, those will do a really good job. And you can also use a colorless blender, like an alcohol marker colorless blender Sometimes it depends on the brand. Some are more like, I think Prismacolor does a really good job with it in terms of uh, the colorless blender from Prismacolor does a really good job with it. 
Whereas I found that Copic wasn't as good at that, at like melting the wax. Cause that's, I mean, that's what we're looking for is it to melt the wax and kind of spread that out. Or the, some of them say they're oil-based, like, and I don't, I don't know. I wish somebody would explain like, what do you mean oil-based? I can work with dusty, cheap, and low pigmented pencils, but I can't work with hard and no pigmented. I get that. You have to, you have to kind of make do, but I'll, I'm, I would like to think, but the companies do what they want to an extent. I would like to think that if you um, contacted them directly, they might, be more interested in bringing their products over but what do i know these are like the same color almost almost this is actually a little bit cooler than this one but they're almost the same color a dead grip yeah I do need a custom swatching theme song. That actually blended okay. I had to like look at it twice because I was like, oh, it's like a green and then it's so much darker and I was like, oh. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us, Maudlin May. Have a good evening and a good weekend. And Milani says, I grip my Apple Pencil so hard and weird because it's big and hard to hold. I have a weird callus at like the bottom of the inside of my thumb. I violently grip it and dig into the screen. My matte paper screen protector lasts like a week before I violently scrape the paper texture off with my vicious draw. I know they make like these kind of like bulbous soft grips for the Apple Pencil. Why did that? Um, I, bought, I bought some to try on regular pencils because they looked very cushy and comfortable. And then I, I just misplaced them. Um, I mean, they wouldn't necessarily work on a surface uh, stylus because of where the buttons are on the surface stylus yeah. but I've put um cushy pencil grips on the surface stylus before you just have to press a little bit harder to get it to activate those side buttons oh dear I mean this white adds barely any white but it does blend a little bit I appreciate that. I'm glad I'm work company. I love watching YouTube while I'm working. Like if I'm if I'm recording, like I'm painting, you know, like I get really lonely. So I have some favorites of my own. Y'all can y'all can probably guess some of them. So oh, this whole box. Where is Maddie? What I need her? This whole box it was just like like it's okay. Is it good? It's okay. Is it great? It's okay. Oh, no. I, well, I don't think it's trying to be. Uh, that is a really good question, though. I mean, I am going to, like, do all the all the number crunching. Yeah, but, I mean, it also depends on, like, what medium you like to work with, too. Like, whether or not you would find it a better value. So, the thing is, it is a better art kit than most of the art kits sold at this price point because those artist love art kits unless you get them on super sale those stupid things are really like the bigger ones are really kind of expensive like the one i reviewed last year no year before was like 70 bucks full price i did not pay full price
I'm trying to put them back in order because I'm that nerd, but I'm also trying to do it kind of quickly. See, for some reason, I can't, I can't do video chatting while I'm working because it kind of, I think like, especially painting, having like a sustained conversation, I think it's using the same part of my brain, but I could type. I just can't talk. So even if Joseph's in the same room, I'll discord him because it's easier for me to say what I want to say through typing than it is through me actually talking. Okay, so next are the woodless pencils. This kind of brings me back because it's all art supplies I used to really like and am not super into anymore. I just kind of grew away from them. I became obsessed with watercolor instead. Um, and it's not like any of these mediums are bad mediums. They're just, you know, Oh, those are definitely graphite. So the thing about these kind of woodless graphite pencils is you drop them and they will snap. I mean, like break in the middle. And while I'm at it, I might as well grab the two, the only expert products in the whole kit, the two wooded pencils. And just in case we need that and that. And that. Oh, you know what? Sorry. Um, so, Arteza names all these kits basically the same thing. They're all like mixed media kit. So, this one is. I'm looking for the box. According to the box. Now they have it list when they had it listed, it was listed under something else. This is the Arteza Mixed Media Art Set Premium Wooden Art Case Painting Tools and Detailing Accessories, which is why I thought it would be like a good addition to the other kit, like, you know, not stepping on each other's toes too much. All right. Man, I remember I was reviewing Dollar Tree graphite pencils and they were all the same. Like they supposedly were six different hardnesses. They were all the same hardness. So that, this is HB. This, it, oh no, oh no. I wonder if this is, to me, they're looking the same and they're feeling the same. This is 2B. Maybe I should just jump to 6B. This is 4B. Okay, that's softer. This is 6B. Much softer, okay. But to me, they're not... Okay, 6B is looking darker, but they're not looking... Um, this is 8B. And then this is Turnbull. Okay, so there is there is actually a difference, at least in soft softness. I might have to try try something. So most of the time when I'm using woodless graphite pencils, I'm using them to do graphite transfers.
Okay, so it sounds like the dryer is good and works and is starting and I can talk a little bit more again. Sorry about that. I've never had a dryer, a washer and dryer installed, so it's a, it's a learning process. So, um, so generally what I would be looking for, they, they do have different hardnesses, but I would also be looking for, especially with like the 10B, for the, ah, oh, yeah, so close, 17 more days. Um, it is it is close when you've got, I have not cut the audio yet. I have not yet. Uh, because the water ran, I can't talk. And are being tested. So I'm going to try out these two wood pencils next, and we'll talk about graphite more in a little bit. I mean, it's, it's a wood pencil. It is a lot of gray. It might be a little bit softer. Um, I don't, if it were me picking the hardnesses to include, I would have done an HB and like a 4B so that you start seeing, cause like HB and 2B are, are kind of close and so it can be hard to see the difference. What I was hoping to see was more of a shift between the actual darkness of the lead as we got to the softer leads. Um, so when I was an undergrad, I used to love sketching with like the softest I don't know why you two thought they should. Yeah. Oh, no problem, Jill. Thank you for joining us. You basically made it to the end. There's not a whole lot more. Uh, I'm just going to review the erasers and I'm going to talk about price, and that's basically it. So I just want to see how well the PVC eraser erases. As you get to harder, or I'm sorry, softer lead, sometimes they can be more prone to like staining the paper. All of these seem like they lift pretty cleanly. To me, a kneaded eraser is a kneaded eraser is a kneaded eraser. So hopefully there shouldn't be anything weird about this one. Oh, it's one sticky. Why are you sticky? Very sticky. Skids a little. Oh yeah. Okay, that's fine. Full of full of graphite now. This is a really sticky kneaded eraser. If you are like me and you're geared about wanting to keep your hands clean all the time, this is gonna bug you. Uh, 
Oh, that's weird. Oh, okay, so over here, this is an area where the coating chipped, so it's just exposing the graphite. Of course, like, one of the big thrills of a kneaded eraser is that you can, like, A, you can mold it to get a fresh surface, and B, you can, like, get it into a really small shape and pick it up. I've never had, I mean, I've seen other people do it, uh, but when I do it, for some reason, it never works out the way I really want it to. Uh, another thing you can do is you can, if you have like a pencil sketch, you can just kind of roll it over the sketch just to lighten up the sketch. Like, um, that, that's a technique my, my Art Squad co-host taught me. And generally, if I'm trying to remove the liner or the pencils, I'm like, go on, I'm down. But I think that would also be useful with uh, like color, you know, color LEDs, that sort of thing. So uh, I'm kind of just waiting until the repair guy heads out because um, it's just kind of really distracting for me. So um, what I want to do next is I want to go through and uh, grab prices for everything and we can talk about how much this kit costs. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like they're selling this particular kit anymore. I don't, I don't know why not. Um, maybe they're just trying to liquidate it. Oh, these sound like, like glass almost. They're good for cleaning soft and oil pastel messes too sometimes. Oh, I have some uh, water pastels. Water base, water soluble. Water, 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 water. That I could test it with. Why not? That is a loud washing machine. We need to get a door in here. We don't yet. This is a room that used to be the dining room, so it's nice and big, but there are no doors. Oh, okay. All right. They kind of lift it. They kind of smudge it. This is a sticky kneaded eraser. I have, I mean, I have used some really cheap, gnarly kneaded erasers, erasers before, and uh, I've used some sticky ones. Generally not good. Can I do a braided hair tutorial on Patreon or YouTube someday, please? Yes, I definitely can. Yeah, I did a hair tutorial, but I don't know if I even talked that much about braids, so I should definitely do that. See, I think people who like love kneaded erasers, love them, stand them. And I loved, I loved playing with them. <laughs> and I liked them when I was younger. And just for some reason, the white vinyl PVC eraser ends up just being my go-to eraser. Man, I was, I, I mean, First off, I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me and helping me unbox and swatch this kit because as you guys can see, it took us three hours and I still got to grab prices. It's, and this is this, I know I was moving kind of slow today compared to last week's stream, but this is still pretty speedy for me. Generally, if I'm doing like a watercolor kit and I'm getting like all in depth with it, it it takes about all evening and then the next day I'll go and uh, record the outro. So, you know, pretty time consuming. And, and some of that is just paint contributing to the mess. Uh, some of that is just like, you know, the time constraints of paint drawing and stuff. Sorry, I have a, a corded lavalier mic and it catches on everything. So I have to double check and make sure that I am not all tangled up. I'd like to go back to doing, so I do wanna like do a second of real talk real quick. Um, I like doing tutorials. I like doing drawing tutorials. I like doing painting and marker tutorials. And those are some of the things that just do the worst on here. I, it's hard. Okay. I'm not going to like, 
I don't want to like get in, like get all sad about it. And I would love to do more of that. And Dawn's a patron and whenever a patron asks, it's more, way more important to me to actually make sure it happens. Cause those are the people who make this channel happen. So I definitely will do it. Also dig and see if I've done any good ones already that might've just gotten missed. Cause frankly, YouTube doesn't even tell people when stuff goes live for me. So it doesn't hurt to kind of re-promote and promote some more and promote again one more time, especially because things do tend to get missed. But I was just bringing that up to say, I like doing the tutorials and I kind of miss doing the tutorials. <sighs> I'm so sorry about all the all the noise and distraction. I really thought he would have come earlier in the day. Okay, let me get caught up. I'm sorry I haven't finished chatting as I would have liked. Uh, I went to get a salad from the fridge. I'm so hungry too. I'm gonna eat after I finish though. And Milani says, oh, they have those in the kit. Have you ever used the Neo Color 2 pastels? They're like oil pastels, but crayons, but also water soluble. Yeah, I have, but I think they got heat damaged because they were delivered to my mom's house in Louisiana when I was living in Nashville and they'd sat outside all day. So by the time I got to them, they handled like garbage, but everybody seems to like them. So I think mine just got ruined. So I would definitely be down to try them again. And, oh, you're so welcome. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Like I said, I wish more art, I had more artsy people around for us to trade art supplies, but I am just hoarding my stuff. I'm trying to use it all. That's how I feel too. Um, it's a, it's a weird situation because I would love to share, but by share, I also want to be loaned stuff in return. So I have friends now I can give them things, but they, they don't have anything and they're not interested in offering anything in return, like even just like to trade, to try something out. So it's not as fun as having someone that you could be like, hey, try this. And they have something sometimes even for you to try out. And my hair tutorial helps you out a lot. Oh, thank you so much. I, yeah, I'm the same way. Um, I'll think, oh, I should leave like a comment on so-and-so's video. I really like it. But because I'm like watching it um, on my TV, I totally forget to go back and leave a comment. And I went on a buying freeze all this year because I have way too many supplies. That is probably wise. And I always say I'm going to do that. And I always end up faltering. Yes. I do. Well, I, I, my goal is not to make, this sounds dumb, but at this point in doing YouTube, my goal isn't to be an influencer. My goal isn't to be famous. My goal isn't to be this super well-known name because, and no, no shade to other art tubers, but I don't want to have to do some of the things that some of them are doing. I just don't think that's fun. I don't want to make a piece of art with every color pink in my studio. I think that's a fun idea, but I don't want to do it. You know, I don't want to have to buy the most expensive gold plated something just because that is clickbaity enough that people will want to watch it. Like I'm just being a stubborn old woman and there's things that I'm like, I just don't want to do that. So I choose not to do that. And at this point, it's mostly just a fun hobby that I enjoy doing and it's, it gives me a chance to share art supplies that I love or art supplies that I don't love and to talk about stuff. And the only thing I wish was different is I do wish these videos got more views. That's, that's where I'm at right now. Um, like I love, actually I'm really happy with my subscriber count. Um, I'm almost at 15 K. I think that's great. If I never got any bigger in terms of subs, I think I could be cool with that. I just wish YouTube let people know when my videos went out or something. Cause like, I mean, you guys can go look at my, my views. Um, it, it's just hard to put so much effort into making something and then it doesn't 
either it's not getting sent to people or um, they're missing it or there, there's always some sort of, or they don't like what I make anymore. So that's, that's kind of the bummer for me. But uh, I, I like, I enjoy reviewing art supplies. Um, I'm kind of working on my depression and my anxiety so that I feel, so that I want to make comics again and uh, so that I can actually read my comments because, uh, and y'all have been wonderful and I, y'all are not at all a problem at all, but um, there was a time where I would get a lot of really, really negative, mean comments and I was in a really bad mental health space at the time. I was really struggling with depression at the time. So it was, it just kind of created this um, anxiety response in me. And I, I want to be better about responding to comments and leaving comments on other people's uh, channels, but it gives me so, so much anxiety that, um, yeah, that's something I want to work on. Um, and I am seeing a doctor about it, but it's still a work in progress. So, um, and, and thank you. Yeah. So, uh, Jimmy whiz. I don't know what it is. Joseph opened that door and like all I can hear now is the, where are my headphones? That'll help. ADHD is fun. And by that, I mean, nah, it's not fun. Okay, that helps. All right, so uh, these are the swatches for the, if I'm too loud, please tell me, because I have noise canceling headphones on, so I can't tell. And I don't want to like yell at y'all. So these are the swatches from these cake style watercolors. So if you tuned in late, I will have a, a time-lapse recap of this that isn't three hours long. But also, uh, these are very similar to the Artist Loft ones. They are a bit chalky. They have an interesting color palette for this style of watercolor. There's actually more jewel tones and earth tones than this kind of palette typically has. So it's kind of interesting to see. They, they perform better than the pink Giorgione set, and that'll be relevant a month from now. But I, I see trouble brewing with these because they're very chalky. And when I use similar style paints, I've had a lot of problems with them reactivating, with them turning to mud. Honestly, with the Arteza ones, with them, after I've done a few layers, they, and they dry out fully, they crack. So I would be interested. I mean, I want to do a field test with this where I paint or create an illustration with the things in this kit. So I'll know for sure then, but I feel like these are not, not great. These are worse than the two Barchisa watercolors. I'll, I'll say that. They're also probably worse than the half pans that I reviewed and also didn't really care for. So this, these are the swatches from the supposedly water soluble, sorry, water soluble oil pastels. They, there's not much movement here. Uh, I, I think calling them water soluble is a stretch, uh, but they do blend together okay. And I would say they are on par with Sakura Crepa, so um, a good children's or a good K through 12 student brand, you know? Um, they smell nice. And all of the, all, a lot of these less expensive art kits love to pack in oil pastels. Sometimes they turn out to be crayons. These are better than 90% of those, but they're still, and I like oil pastels, but they're still, not necessarily like my favorite. I think they could be, if you are doing art for fun and for relaxation, I think they could be fun and they're very inexpensive. So, you know, there's definitely some pros there. So these swatches are from the watercolor pencils. So that is this bottom tier here. And as you guys can see, also not much movement. I also would sh struggle to call these watercolor pencils or watercolor or water soluble because they don't really want to move. And 
there, the color, so you get 24 of these, but the color selection is weird because usually when I do my color wheel, I do two yellows, two reds, two blues in order to make my secondary colors, like clean mixes for the secondary colors. You want like a warm blue and a cool blue, a warm red and a cool red, a warm yellow and a cool yellow. This set has a warm yellow and a cool yellow and that's it. Like it's got a cool, no, a warm red and then their blues are all way cooler than you would expect them to be, including the ultramarine blue. And I'm just kind of puzzled because ultramarine blue is one of those colors that most, most brands can actually get right. So I don't know. I, I will say I don't like this set as much as I like the set I reviewed last week. And both of them are called mixed media sets. Arteza isn't selling this set currently, but they are, I think, still selling the other set. So something I did like were the Inconic pens. So these are very similar to Stabilo pens. Actually, now that I look at these, these look a lot like the pens I used to see all the time on AliExpress back when I was buying inexpensive uh, alcohol markers to review when I was doing the, the blog. So they are definitely a white label product. They bought them from someone else, but they are alcohol marker safe and they are not waterproof, but somewhat water resistant in the same way that a lot of fountain pen inks are considered to be waterproof in that they're still legible even after you've added water to them. So let me, let me dig. This is the mixed media pad, I believe. No, it's a drawing pad, sorry. Here we go. So as you guys can see, some color react, hopefully, let me move it, sorry. Some color reactivation, but not total color reactivation. That's, this could actually make for some really interesting techniques where you go ahead and you pre-activate pre these colors first. So they're not gonna move anymore once you're actually painting them and uh, just kind of let that influence your work. But here are the swatches with alcohol marker over them and I didn't really see any movement at all. So you could use the Inconic pens with your alcohol markers. Oh, I don't know why I'm putting that away because I do still need it to talk about the color pencils. So the color pencils are dusty, but they are fine. They are probably on par-ish with Crayola. Um, so Dr. Bennett pointed out that, uh, asked actually if you need a special sharpener for the triangular barrels. With those, I think you might, cause they don't wanna, they included a sharpener, which is just like a standard regular sharpener. And it has trouble cut, uh, sharpening these pencils. And I don't know if it's because this sharpener is just not a good sharpener or if the triangular shape actually makes it more difficult. So I've mentioned this before, but I have early onset arthritis. And so ease of use, ease of maintenance is something I talk about a lot because it's important to me. And there's a lot of people who have uh, manual dexterity issues that are gonna care about that. So these triangular bodies are supposed to be easier to hold ergonomically. I didn't really think, find that to be the case, uh, but they are harder to sharpen. And that's a problem in my opinion. They blended okay though. Uh, the woodless graphite pencils, these things tend to be kind of fragile because without a wood casing, if you drop them, the graphite is very likely to just split in half entirely. And most of them are covered with a plastic coating, but the plastic coating has already started to chip. They, you do have different softnesses to them. Like the 10B is very soft, but I was hoping to see like a bigger increase in darkness in terms of, you know, between the hardest, which is HB and the softest, which is 10B. And there just wasn't that big of a difference. I tried the white vinyl slash PVC eraser. Uh, Two people have posted that. What is that? Sorry about that. Uh, it erases fine, even with the softer leads, which I find that many erasers will just smear that. And the gum eraser uh, is the stickiest gum eraser I have ever encountered. It doesn't, this particular one 
does not, honestly, it feels like modeling clay. This particular one does not do as well with the softer graphite as it does with the harder ones or as the PVC one does. But I'm not a big, a big kneaded eraser person anyway. So that could be my bias showing. The two expert wood pencils were a 2B and an HB. I, uh, now me personally, this is just, if I were picking what goes in this kit, I would have picked two pencils that had a bigger difference between them, like an HB and a 4B or a 6B, because I mean, unless, to me, it doesn't make that big a difference. There's not enough of a color difference and there's not enough of a softness difference for me to have noticed, but I'm very heavy handed. So it could also be a problem with, I just bear down too hard with my pencils. So what do I, I'm looking for the black, um, there it is. I also tried swatching the color pencils that they included on this black mix, not, not mixed media paper. It feels like a mixed media paper, but they call it a sketchbook paper and it has a very smooth surface. So it doesn't really have enough tooth to be good with color pencils. And this was included in both kits. And I think this is really neat. I really liked it the first time I talked about it because it folds up into a frame, which that's just pretty cool. And um, it just kind of elevates something that you've done. You know, it makes it a little more special. Now, I did actually like the gel pins that they included, but as I said last week, the true test with gel pins is, uh, <laughs> Do they still work a week later? So we will have to just wait and see, but they're just very lightweight plastic gel pins, nothing super special about them. They are in 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.0, with the 1.0 being of around the same size as a Signo. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I need a water refill. That leaves us with the metallic watercolors, which were included in this kit, but I didn't really talk about them because I talked about them last week. So pretty good saturation, pretty good shimmer, both on black paper and on white paper. They do have a really strong smell of like cheap, cheap watercolors. And that could be something about the, the binder. The only things I haven't really talked about are the things I haven't necessarily really used. We did get a pad of drawing paper and um, it's a little bit heavier than sketchbook paper. I, I said earlier in the video that me personally, I don't really find myself using drawing paper a lot. I use sketchbook paper and watercolor paper and mixed media paper a lot, but drawing paper is one of those things that's in that like, <coughs> It's in that weird in-between zone where um, it's, it's not fancy enough for the fancier things I wanna do and it's not cheap enough for just sketching. So I don't generally use drawing paper all that much, but this pad seems like a fine pad. So what's left then is the color wheel, which I thought was kind of an interesting inclusion. It's very small. Um, and it basically kind of gives you an idea of what colors will look like when mixed with other colors, which is nice to have. Gives you an idea ahead of time before you commit to something. <clears throat> also, oh, the wheels actually rotate independently. That's kind of, no, never mind. There's three wheels, sorry. Uh, and this one is also kind of neat because you have your base color, your key color, and it demonstrates what it'll look like as you add black and what it looks like as you decrease saturation or add white. And the same thing for, you know, all the other colors around the wheel. And also explains this particular color relation to these other colors. So the thing about this is if you already understand color theory, this is helpful. But if you don't understand color theory, you don't know what these things mean, which is totally fine. Um, in that, I mean, a lot of people don't. Um, and there are tutorials and stuff online, but I mean, I forget this stuff all the time. Uh, this isn't as helpful as a resource. Like I think Joseph said, they changed their name to Adobe color. It used to be cooler. 
up. Ah, the handsome water fairy brought me some water. Oh. Ah. So basically what I would say is this can be helpful, but I am still gonna be using cooler for my help. The case itself, I'm a sucker for these kind of hidden drawers. It also doesn't take up as much space as the other kit. However, I think the quality of the materials in the other kit is a little bit better than the quality of the materials in this kit. So what I'm, I'm not gonna do it live with you guys, but what I am gonna do, because that took up like 15 minutes and I know it was boring to watch. What I'm going to do is off stream, I am going to figure out the prices for everything and calculate a total. I'll share that total, oh, sorry, over on my Discord server, the paint box. And it will also be, I'll post it on the community tab and I will post it in the time lapse video. So hopefully you guys can find it. So that way, I'm not keeping you guys all night if we're not swatching and talking about things. And it'll also let me kind of catch up on the chat. So Milani said, views are so frustrating. Most of my subs come from my doll tutorials, so YouTube doesn't recommend my art stuff. Yeah, most of my subs, most of my most watched stuff is the stuff I just don't get. It is a Michael's tour from 2017. And I do Michael's tours pretty regularly, but the, that particular one went bonkers. And then an awful looking video, like the lighting is atrocious and it's super shaky cam of me demonstrating how I printed stickers at home, which is not, not precious information at this point. Everybody has done a better job of that tutorial. And I think, the follow-up video where I'm using a circle punch to punch those stickers out. And that is the most popular thing on my channel. <laughs> and I kind of want to like take it down because it's really bad. And Weblight Dream said, I was also getting so sad and lost in my views and subs that I forgot why I did my channel. I love doing reviews, hauls, and art. That's what I have to remind myself of is that I just enjoy playing around with the materials, learning new things about the materials, researching stuff and getting to share stuff with you guys. And like, you know, a hundred views, I have to like also keep in mind like a hundred views is a hundred people who watch that and that's pretty cool. So I, yeah, having to like ground myself is really important because I mean, and this is, this is the thing I was going through with comics is like, I love working on Kara. I do. And it's so much work, but it's, it's so hard to like have put so much of yourself into something and it never, I mean, Kara is not a, the fairest example because the Kickstarter went well and I shouldn't, I'm not complaining, but it, it was more like, I, I never, I, I hit a point where I started to feel like among my comic peers, I was like a dinosaur and I'd gotten left behind and like everybody had kind of moved on. Um, and I, I got left behind without them. And part of that was I was a co-founder of a webcomic community and the two other founders decided to dissolve it. So, I mean, I, I, I lost the majority vote. So that kind of died and I kind of lost a lot of friendships with that. Like we all just kind of fell out of touch and um, I'm not super sure what all happened other than there were a lot of people involved in our, our chat because our chat was a public discord server who were just kind of a lot of a lot of they required a lot of effort and maintenance and moderation um, and that kind of made aspects of that collective more difficult than they needed to be and then the pandemic hit and people just had no spoons anymore. But when I lost that community, it made me, I, I'd started Kara without that community. I just had some friends from art school and we'd kind of drifted apart. And then I, ha I was part of that community. And when I lost that community, I lost a lot of the people who taught, like a, a big group of people who talked to me regularly about the work I was making and they seemed to enjoy it. And I felt like I was really communicating and part of something. 
And it's just hard for me when I lose communities. It's hard for me to kind of get myself back together and, um, you know, get back on the horse and get back to making it. And I'm working on that. I'm trying to actually form a, a comic community here in St. Charles Parish because I think having a group where we're all working on comics, it, totally different ones, and we can talk to each other about them will help me get back on that horse. Uh, sorry. Reading. Thank you, Dawn. Some of those people that do art trends, they don't really research and they don't really seem to know what they're talking about. <laughs> You know, that's why even though it's tempting to do them, I don't because I am like, to, for me to do it, the amount of work I would want to do, not that my videos are polished because they're not, but like the amount of work I'd want to do in prepping the art and researching the materials would turn it, turn something that's just meant to be like a fun challenge into this way too much thing. So I kind of try to remind myself to like, just do the things I'm interested in doing. This is a hobby and it's for fun. You don't have to chase every trend and you don't have to spend all the money in the world to do it. Y'all are art. Cindy said that I might be small, but y'all are a fierce and dedicated viewership. And honestly, y'all are the reason, one of the big reasons other than I just enjoy doing it, that I keep coming back because y'all make it great and hanging out with y'all makes it fun. And honestly, Unboxing and swatching this kit by myself would have been so lonely and kind of boring and getting to hang out with you guys and do it with y'all and chat with y'all and I'm so sorry about all the noises that the repair guy made but it made it so much more fun than it would have been if I had just done an unbox and swatch and released it. So thank you guys so much for like sharing your Friday night with me whether you were drawing or painting or housework it doesn't matter I'm just happy y'all were hanging out with me. And uh, Dawn said, you don't have to watch my channel. It's no pressure. I love your energy and vibrations. I need to though. I need to be better about watching other people's art videos and art channels. Um, then that kind of ties into the anxiety thing that I was talking about earlier, where it's so, it, mm, I, wish I, I wish I didn't have dumb anxiety watching other people's art videos. It is super frustrating. I'm working on it. I'm not there yet, but I will get there. And I'm looking forward to that day because I don't want anxiety to kind of rule my life. And it had gotten to the point where it felt like it did. And uh, Leilani says, okay, Sky is done ironing. So he wants to watch TV and have to wash my hair. I know how that is. Share, um, Joseph and I off share work room all the time. So sometimes, you know, we got to take turns. So I 100% get it. I'm super glad you could hang out with us. And okay, sorry. Try to get caught up. Weblight Dream said, love those watercolors. I don't own them, but they look so pretty. They do seem like they are. I haven't had a chance to paint with them too much. They do seem very pretty. I would be interested in seeing how well they handle on black paper, like the way I did that beta fish a while back. Like if they're up to that, because if they're up to that, then they are pretty good. Um, I used the fine text for that. And there's something about the fine text where I love the fine text, but the formulation is like flowy. So it works for that. And I wonder if the formulation for these is as good as that. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Cindy said YouTube tagging and recommendation royally sucks. It does. And I try to be so good about tagging stuff and I try to not, I'm terrible at titling things, so that doesn't help. But, um, I, I try to be like very, on point in terms of like, this is what the content is. I'm going to title it in such a way that it accurately reflects the content. And <laughs> it's not, that's not, not the best for me. Um, and Weblight said, I like seeing small channels too, not just big ones. Same here. Actually, my husband is very, like if he's looking up a review for something, he tries to like find reviews from smaller channels because they're less likely to have gotten paid to review it or gotten it sent for free. Or, you know, it's more likely to just be a normal person who's just talking about a thing that they either really like or really hate. So I, I like, I kind of miss when YouTube was not so sponsorship driven and ad revenue driven and staying on the good side of companies driven because it people could just kind of do what they wanted to do and they could just kind of say what they wanted to say 
And I don't mean that to be like, I don't mean ugly or hate speech. I just mean like in terms of products, like they could just be honest about, you know, products. Um, and I feel like as we have sponsorships, and not, not me, but you know, as we see sponsorships becoming a thing, and theoretically sponsorships could be a great thing, like with Fruit Explorer, he has, um, I think Wanderlust Nursery kind of sponsors him. And that makes sense because I think they don't care if he like loves every fruit they send him or not. That's not the point of what they're doing. But then you have sponsorships where, I'm gonna like probably get myself in trouble, but like I get really annoyed seeing all the VPN uh, sponsorships from people who don't have a background in tech, and they're they're promising that these VPNs can do like everything in the world for them, things that VPNs are not designed to do at all, and like that starts really frustrating me. Like if NordVPN ever asked me if I'd be interested, I I don't need their money. I'm good, uh, I because I I would not say the things they would want me to say. You know? Uh, yeah, yeah. I uh, Dawn said that I love supporting smaller channels. They are more supporting and sharing. I think each individual person, it means more, you know? Because you don't have this huge group of people, but you also don't have this huge group of people who are mad at you either. So there's, there's benefits to it. Uh, Becca and Webb are two art, YouTubers that really support and guide me and I think that it means a lot. Thank you for saying that. That means a lot. That's the thing I need to like remember is that there are a lot of wonderful people and this has given me the chance to meet people too and I think that's really cool. And Bugsy hates ads on big channels. And Bugsy, I mean, Bidoof hates ads on big channels, sorry. And Bugsy prefers the smaller channels. Not that I don't want them to succeed. I just prefer their vibe more. Yeah, there is like, like for what I'm doing, at one time I, I felt very differently about it and I had to kind of like full circle around. But these days I just like want to test art supplies and hang out with people who like art supplies. That's all I want. Yeah, yeah, it's it's always Skillshare, NordVPN. Oh, what's the um, Squarespace? And that, oh, Harry's Razors gets it a lot, but not as much as those other two. Oh, and Bright Sellers. I see a lot of ads for Bright Sellers. And not that I think there's anything wrong with people taking sponsorships if they do genuinely like those products. I just, the tech ones, from people who are not in a position to be giving tech advice kind of freak me out. And Weblight said, it's nice to see small channels grow. Oh, oh, oh yes. Okay, sorry. One sure if I read it twice. It's nice to see small channels grow, but keep their voice and style the same as when they were small channels. I feel I feel like that's probably pretty hard to do, but I well. I was a lot, when I was much smaller, I was a lot, yeah, I agree with you. I'm, I'm trying to, so like my videography was way worse. I've grown a lot there and I'm proud of that. It's not the best, but it's passable often. And I was a lot angrier back then and I've chilled out a lot. So I think, I think if you can grow and become a better person, that's awesome. If you grow and you, your, the needs of your channel dictate everything you do. And I'm not like calling anyone out. I'm just, I'm, I'm like more posing hypotheticals than like calling anybody out. But like, I think I, if I had gotten popular the way I'd wanted to back then, I think I would have been a much worse person and a worse YouTuber. And I think, I think I would have like, I just think it would have been bad for me, you know? So in a way, it's really good that things have shaken out the way they've, they've shaken out. Uh, ba, ba, ba. And Sidney said, it feels nice to share with all of you. It's one of the reasons I connected with Becca in the way she, thank you, and the way she, which is full of awesome. Yeah, y'all, y'all are great. It's so nice getting to hang out with y'all again on weekends. I, 
I like forgot how much I missed it until last Sunday. And then I was like, oh, I really missed it. But um, I, I need to like figure out a way to have like just streams that are more regular and casual. Right now it's just hard because like, like uh, my family's coming over a lot and they're really loud. Actually, I can't even record if they're over because I can't even get audio. Um, so it's just, I'm hoping that I can like start streaming again, like once a week and doing like, like we're painting flowers or something, you know, um, once that's gotten kind of more settled down. Oh, thank you, Bugsy. No, I'm not. I want to get back to Joseph asked. I don't know if y'all can hear. He asked if I got back, if I ever finished the how to paint flowers series. And I, I have it, and I know where that. No, there's a bunch. There's a bunch. I have three pages of that. I, I think I did three, and then we started. So I quit streaming for a while when we were really serious about house hunting, and we were looking at a lot of houses. And I think I, I quit when we were first putting in an offer on this house here. Um, because we were waiting on them to move out, so we didn't really know when we could move in and i was start we were starting to pack stuff up so it's it's been a while but I, we were house hunting for a long time too <laughs> and i'm so glad that some of you guys have stuck with me for a long time and yeah thank you dr bennett i i didn't catch who did it so i'm glad joseph did thank you so much so uh i am losing my voice i had a really good time hanging out with you guys today um uh, I will hopefully see you guys again soon. And uh, I don't know if YouTube is letting you guys know this. Cause I, don't, I honestly, I, one day I'm going to be like, tell me what YouTube is showing you guys and what it's not showing you guys. Cause I never know what y'all are getting to see, but I hope you guys are enjoying the advent calendar that I've been doing every day. I've been having fun with it. Uh, I mean, I know I mentioned the 24 day calendar a lot. It's cause I really wanted to. I really wanted it to come in. I really want to know what's in it. Um, and I really wanted to be able to share that with you guys. So I appreciate y'all hanging out with me. Uh, Weblight was house hunting recently too, but called it off. My lone person just made it impossible. Yeah. Um, the hoops for getting a mortgage can be really frustrating and high. And... You know, it's funny, renting is so much more. I mean, you need more money. Obviously, you need more money at the get-go to buy, but renting over long-term is so much more expensive than like having a mortgage, but your credit score has to be good and you have to be able to make a down payment and it's just, it's hard. Yay! Oh, that's awesome! that you love your house and that your husband built it. That's super cool. All right, y'all. I hope you guys have a good rest of your week, a happy weekend. Um, I don't yet know when the next stream will be, but I will, I'll try to sneak something in there. I'll try to figure something out. So I hope you guys stay safe, happy and healthy. And I hope to see you guys. You too. I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye guys. Bye. Thank you.